Hello, hello and welcome to this coverage of the Irish Championship 2019. Uh, I'm here live in Dublin. Uh, the players are right next door. I think it's the first time there's been live commentary on the Irish Championship, so I'm a bit nervous. Uh, it's also my first time doing commentary by myself, but I'm also very much looking forward to it. I don't think it's going to be as serious as uh, most of my other jobs. Um, probably a fairly laid back setting. I'm really counting on you guys, uh, I have to say, to, to help me analyze the games. Because I've decided, actually, the engine, you can see it in the background, the engine is still on because <laughs> that's how I was looking at the games for now. But I think uh, it will be a lot more fun uh, if we look at the games without the engine. Uh, so I'll, I've turned it off for now. And actually, just as we are starting the broadcast, the game... Uh, on board one between Conor O'Donnell and Alex Astane Lopez has ended in a draw. What timing! Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for at least one of them uh, to join me, maybe even both. I don't know if we can arrange both, probably be a, a bit of a squeeze. But for now, okay, until, until we see if the players join us or one of them at least. Uh, welcome to everyone in the chat, Gormali Fan Club. Thank you very much uh, for subscribing. 17 month uh, streak, so much appreciated. And uh, yeah, hello to Mark Singer, who's asking, how is my coach doing? His coach, as I know, is Alex Lopez. Uh, so I think before we look at any games, um, I think let's have a look maybe at the tournament standings uh, for now. So to do that, I'm going to go to chess results. If you're in the chat, if you want to see the results, actually I'm doing this from a foreign, uh, this should take you to the results. Also, I've, um, I've organized a few, I've added a few commands for this tournament. So if you, for example, type live, uh, this will take you to the live games. And a last command, and then I'll leave you in peace for now, is commands. So the commands will take you to, to the list of all my commands. And there you can see all the things you can look up. Oh, one last, one last one, since John is in the chat. If you are new to the Irish chess scene and you want to find out about the players, uh, in the preview there, in the preview, you can see an article written by uh, John McMorrow, the chairman of the ICU, also Johnny Machine in the chat. So that will give you an idea of who's playing, what's at stake, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, but for now, let's have a look at the results. So these are uh, the round five pairings, which is underway right now. We can maybe have a look at round four, what happened yesterday, yesterday, while I was traveling um, here to Dublin. So there were already only two players left on a perfect score, Alex Lopez and Tarun uh, Kanya Marala. Actually, in my opinion, uh, Tarun and his sister Trisha are for now the two uh, big stories of this Irish championship. Uh, they are only 13 and 14 years old and they are having uh, both of them a fantastic tournament. Actually, maybe it'll be easier if we go here and I show you. So this is a Tarun's tournament. He's on three out of four, already gaining 23 points and today he's playing the uh, top seed. Is Sam the top seed? Or is he second seed? I should really know it, but uh, Sam Collins, the number one Irish player. Actually, I just looked it up five minutes ago, who is higher ranked between Sam and Alex Babur, and I should really know it. But anyway, uh, Sam Collins, one of the top two, three players of Ireland for the longest time. Um, so yeah, fantastic tournament so far, beating two IMs, David Fitzsimons and Mark Quinn, who's making his return uh, to the Irish Championship, and then his sister Trisha, uh, also on three out of four, also having beaten Mark Quinn. So they, yeah, so Sam is the top seed. That's what I thought. So Sam Collins, top seed, Alex Berbuin on two, Alex Lopez on three. So yeah, Trisha also on three out of four. And Trisha already has two women I am norms. Uh, her level, probably in my opinion, already a lot higher uh, than that. And she only needs a last norm to get the title. Uh, John has told me that probably four and a half or five out of nine will be enough. So a big game 
for her today. Let's just, uh, before we continue, uh, let me actually switch back to this, this will be better. Uh, da, 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 here we go. So let's just scroll down and see the standings here. Uh, so there you see with the updated result the draw between Alex Lopez and Connor O'Donnell. Uh, Alex still leading the tournament on four and a half out of five. Connor uh, in second place on four out of five. And then there's the duel between the two Stevens on board two, Stephen Brady and Stephen Moran. If Stephen uh, Moran can win his game with the black pieces, he will join Alex in joint first. Uh, all the rest of the pack is on three out of four. It's a big group of people there. So seeing as board one has ended in a draw, and I expect either Alex uh, or Connor to, to join me, I expect they will be analyzing their games. And then I'll probably have to go and find them there because they probably don't know <laughs> where I am. Before, um, I actually, I was going to show you the game, but seeing, I think it makes more sense to go to a game that's in progress and wait for them. Someone has just tried coming into the room. Yeah, someone is there. I think we will be joined by Alex. I'll uh, set the right, be right back banner, uh, get him set up, and we'll be right back. And we're back, and we back with. I think you can move over a little bit. Should I move this way? Yeah. And we're back with the title defender, Alex Lopez, who just finished his game against Conor O'Donnell. A big game. Yeah, yeah, a big game. He's um, he's always a tough opponent. This was our fourth game, and we've had three draws so far. So um, for sure, I mean, he's especially with the white pieces. He has a really strong repertoire. Um, so. Yeah, I'm quite happy with uh, with a quick draw um, overall. There are some people greeting you in the chat already. Man from Mars, also a big thank you Hello. to uh, M Singer for subscribing. Um, he's been asking about you. He wanted Hello Mark. <laughs> Hello, Mark. And once again, yeah, wanted to donate, but donations. Coffee is for closers. Coffee is for closers. <laughs> Very wise words from Mark. Uh, harsh, but uh, harsh, but fair. Certainly fair, more than fair. So, do you want to take us to the game? Yeah, sure. I mean, it was a it was a quick draw, um, but I think it was. I mean, quick draw in, quick terms, draw of in moves. terms of moves. Yeah, but not in terms of time, I guess. No, exactly. Um, I think. Okay, first of all, should we just go back to yeah, the very start? 
Absolutely. Oh, and Adam Hunt is in the chat. Hello, Adam. Hello, Big Adam. Big shout out to Adam. I think a lot of you will have seen him being in our spot in the commentaries, but at the British, which has just concluded with Danny Gormelli. Uh, so big shout out to Adam. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, so, okay, so will we, I'll, I'll look at it, hold on, maybe I'll flip the board just because yeah, sure. if people don't mind, so just because that was my perspective during the game, though. <laughs> with a bit uh, more color. Yeah, so we, just... we're start kicking things off with a, <laughs> with a glitch, always a good start. Okay, okay. There you go. all right, perfect. Um, yeah, so first of all, the two previous times that we faced when Connor had the white pieces, he went uh, d4. So c4 came as slight bit of a surprise, but on the other hand, not so much of a surprise because he played it against Sam earlier in the tournament. Um, and I decided to, actually, I spent most of today's prep uh, prepping against d4. I just you know, took a shot that that's what he was going to play, and I was wrong, <clears throat> so already a good start. Um, and I decided to play e5 uh, just because I thought, okay, this might surprise him a little bit. Which is not part of your usual... No, but I've played it a couple of times over the years, but it's not what I usually play. The thing is that most often I've played c6, but mm -hmm. the problem here is I thought maybe he would play d4 and then force me into playing a slab. And I had decided today that if you went d4, I don't want to play a slab. Mm -hmm. So it would have seemed silly to get move order tricked. Mm -hmm. That was the reason why I went for a classical uh, approach. But the thing is that I played, <laughs> I played these moves very quickly. And this is all kind of mainline. And here he surprised me to go for this e4 system. I didn't think he'd go for this. And here the main move is bishop b4, I believe. Um, but I decided to play bishop c5. And I allowed knight takes e5, which, I mean, I said to Connor after the game that I'm absolutely insane for allowing this possibility without knowing the theory inside out, because this is extremely sharp. probably well prepared in this Yeah, game. exactly, exactly. I actually checked it, that this has been played a lot on the highest level as well. Yeah, I mean, so it's complete, yeah, it's completely crazy, and it, mm -hmm. it points to needing to improve my repertoire quite a bit. Um, so I thought you were gonna say your sanity. No. <laughs> Gormelli uh, Chess Club says fan club says hi Alex. Fan club. And uh, Danny R says how strong are the Kanya Morales? They seem to be doing very well. I guess you're a bit late to the show because I actually started uh, started off the show by talking about them. For me, uh, so far the biggest um, stars, the biggest surprises of the tournament, and maybe we can talk about them. After the game, uh, you can give me your take as well. You played Tarun yesterday. Sure. Maybe we could even briefly look at the game. Yeah, um, sure. If you remind me, I can give my opinion there. Sure. Yeah. Um, so basically, okay, so here already my pawn has been taken on e5, and if I uh, don't capture back, that's what I did, uh, what else can I do? I mean, I either lose a pawn or I could take here on f2. But in general, this kind of thing looks extremely bad. Knight takes and then d4, and you have this really, really strong uh, position where white has, seems to have a weak king, but it's actually not the case. Johnny Machine says, it's that type of thinking that has got you where you are in life and chess. Quote. <laughs> well, he was probably well prepared, so I decided to run headfirst into that. <laughs> It's always a pleasure to have John in the uh, John in the chat. John, of course, for those of you who don't know, is the uh, chairman of the Irish Chess Union. Um, a modest, a modest man, hence why he why he goes by the name of Johnny Machine. Uh, humble, humble individual. Um, so anyway, so after knight takes e5 here, knight takes e5 seems pretty much reasonable, and after d4. For starters, I thought maybe there was something like this. Mm -hmm. And then if you, he had to take, bishop takes, then the position is fine for me because I'm going to take on c3, maybe ruin his structure, pressure on e4. It seems like, okay, he has a bit more space, but my pieces are quite well uh, well placed. But what I realized here is this move c5. And suddenly his threat is to first take, first take my bishop on d6 and then take my knight. And, uh, you know, if I move my knight somewhere this position looks really quite quite horrible because he has the bishop pair, a beautiful center. The position seems horrible. 
So because of all of this, I also could play such a move as d6 here, but then I thought takes, takes, and by the way, I'm completely theoryless, so maybe it turns out that this is playable, I, I have no idea. I thought maybe something like this could be played, but again, bishop pair, decent center. I mean, if you want to take a very... Four. No, I no. don't care. Because <laughs> I, 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 I took a brief look at the time, but my memory is obviously terrible. I think b4 is the top choice. I think queen f3 is the first sort of not main. So I thought you might be, you know, you might be familiar with all this. No, I mean, if I was familiar, I wouldn't have spent... Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> I wouldn't have spent... Five minutes, then eight minutes. Yeah. Eight, five minutes, eight minutes, and then 15 and 23, right? I mean, probably I would have spent a little bit less. There are psychological tricks, but we don't usually we don't usually burn over half our clock time by before move yeah, 10. Yeah, no, but when I asked the queen f3, like when the deep thinking started, I realized, okay, it's probably not. Yeah, I mean... What is no, that just happened? kidding. You're still the leader of the pack and a guest on the best oh, streamers wow. stream Mr. smiley face. Mr. Singer with, uh, with a big Very donation. generous donation of 50 euro. Much appreciated. Mark, Alex will get a coffee. The rest. Yes. <laughs> the rest is for me. But he'll get his coffee. No, but on a serious note, it's much appreciated. And thank you very much for your generosity. Absolutely. Um, so... Yeah, so basically in this position here, uh, what I ended up doing after knight takes is I ended up taking this knight, then he went d4, and bishop b4, which I figured was probably all theory, because black hasn't done anything horribly wrong, so I assumed this was all theory. And now, according to Connor, queen f3 is, is sort of the, the best try. Mm -hmm. Of course, during the game, because I wasn't sure about the theory, this move has to be a uh, concern, because, you know, the typical mm -hmm. double attack... And if you're wrong, then you're you're really in so trouble. So what were you planning here? And I thought after knight takes c3, that black is doing fine. Because the point is, if queen takes g7, then I go knight e4 check. Mm -hmm. And I save my knight. And then when he goes some king move, if he goes to d1, he has to worry about knight takes f2. Say king move, now I take the rook back and I'm up a piece. Uh, obviously, it looks extremely scary. But I also thought um, he doesn't have bishop g5 because... The knight on e4 is covering mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, if bishop h6, well, my bishop is on b4, mm -hmm. protecting the rook. And if he does something like, I don't know, f3, I can also, I can potentially go here. And let's say he went bishop g5 now. I could go knight e6. And then if he took here, let's say I take, take, uh, take. And the dust has settled and I have two, two pieces. pieces, which is very good in this type of position. So... I didn't see anything. The reason I took so long is because I wanted to check and double check. Because if I'm wrong, then I I, I, I could lose a miniature. Just a quick look at the chat. Hello to everyone who's just joined us. Tam Crew, Chess Weeb, uh, Adob Kalin, and Joao Alexandre saying, congrats, Alex. I'm not sure what the congratulations are for. For your brilliant draw. <laughs> so yeah. far, only smooth five. Smooth draw with black. Yeah, smooth I mean, draw with black. In a great tournament the, so far. This is the positivity we need. Yeah, at the moment, the sole leader on four and a half. You can only be caught by Stephen Moore, and we'll look at their game in a minute. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, hello to my subscriber, Emir Gunner, of course. Um, so, and also, I think Chess We writes. If you're wrong. Chesweeb, I believe it is. Am I wrong in saying that Chesweeb is Ilya Nuzhnik? Maybe I'm completely wrong. I'm not sure. At least on, I think, well, he will tell us if he, he is. He will tell us if he is. Uh, Hello, Ilya. I haven't seen Ilya since he was about 12 oh, okay. in Montenegro at the European Years. He was playing with a teddy bear. All right, Very I'm cute. sure that's the kind of thing, Ilya. Uh, uh, it's Dennis Boros. Uh, Dennis Boros. And I mean. Ilya. Okay. I'm sure Ilya appreciates the, uh, the, the, the the retelling of the teddy bear story. <laughs> also, BC0123 is saying he needs to win 9 out of 9, lol. He failed the 100% record. <laughs> uh, I'd be lying if I said it didn't come into my mind uh, during the game. when After my opponent offered the draw, I thought to myself, if I take it, the 9 out of 10, 9 dream. Well, when he offered the draw, we'll, we'll get to it in a second, but your time was already starting. It wasn't to... so bad. Because I've spent 20 minutes before say, taking the draw, okay. it was like 45 minutes. Okay. It's not ideal, but it wasn't so terrible. 
because he had an hour, mm -hmm. so it was a 15 minute difference. Um, yeah, so okay, so he played queen f3 pretty much immediately. Um, and now, again, another tricky position. I again figured the move d5 was sort of uh, it's the principled move because at, at least I thought it was the principled move. But it turns out that it's not the best move, according to Connor, and I have no reason to doubt him because he's a very good theoretician and also, uh, you know, he, he seemed to know this line well. He says that knight takes c3 is actually the, the path to equality. And the point is that after b takes c3, the most common moves are either bishop c5 or bishop e7. But against either of them after queen g3, uh, white is standing. It looks a bit, yeah. I mean, if I, and I'm not familiar with the position, I, I wouldn't want to play this. I mean, what do you, do you have to play g6, king f8, one of those two moves? Yeah, it looks to me like g6, maybe, but yeah, it looks, I mean, the only thing that white has worse is this structure on c3 and c4, mm -hmm. but he has more space. Uh, black's development is a little bit tricky, and especially if you don't know this position, mm -hmm. it's really hard to play. Chess sweep, so uh, for those of you who don't know, Dennis Borosha is a grandmaster who's here with us in the chat, and he says d5, which you play, it seems very natural. Yeah, of course, d5 seems natural, but I'll, I'll just share with you, yeah? Just before, a uh, big, big shout out to the one and only Anton Skredmi, who's joined us saying, grow your hair out, Alex. And uh, Anton, of course, my longtime editor, friend, and he's also responsible Hello, for all the graphics you'll see throughout. Absolutely. He is okay. the, the creative talent behind the, uh, the graphics. I've, I've, long, I've long been... Uh, been upset over the fact that many people assume that you are the creative talent behind your graphics. So we're here to, to correct correct this. Uh, Set the record this, straight. Exactly. Um, so anyway, according to Connor, here the, the best move is actually bishop a5, okay. and he claims that this is just equality. Um, and I'm then not, you make queen g3 here? Huh? I have absolutely no idea, of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the, to show the dangers of the position, for example, if he goes g6, uh, if I go g6 to defend the pawn, I mean this could be a miniature here. Yeah. My queen is my queen is gone. Maybe I have the move bishop take c3, check, and the point is he can't take without yeah. losing the bishop. But after he moves king, king b1, somewhere. I yeah, I mean I don't know you bishop get to takes. Look the bishop, but, but my king is in. We can maybe trouble. just show it very quickly. Show that line. Uh, yeah, just here I can take. The point is if I, if he takes this bishop, then I take. His bishop, but he just moves the king somewhere like d1, and if I take here, take. And at first sight, you might say, well, strict material count. I have a pawn, a bishop, and a rook for a queen. Seems okay, but uh, with my bishop on a1, a bit scary. My king on d8, yeah. my lack of development. I was actually just wondering, is there any way to trap the bishop immediately? Probably not. Well, maybe. I mean, after some move like king c2, I can't move the bishop. And then f4, and then... Well, you uh, can play bishop d4 or not? Bishop after d4, king queen c2. h4. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, I mean... Uh, but I, 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 bishop might even get I'm changed. not afraid to admit that yeah. when I suggested king c2, I didn't see bishop d4. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, I pretended like I had. Uh, that's part of, part of the, uh, the way chess players play, yeah. you know? Uh, okay, so let's go back and anyway, yeah, after bishop a5, I have still have no idea what exactly is, is going on if he goes queen g3. Uh, because if you castle here, the problem is this typical idea of bishop here. And if you go bishop c3 now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You ruined, you ruined <laughs> my, uh, my moment. Uh, bishop c3 now. So this, this is, is the whole point behind bishop a4. Probably a5 the point, probably. yeah. Uh, because if queen takes, now I take his bishop, and I don't care that my structure is ruined too much. Up and, you should be fine. and if he does something like king d1, I guess now I take this guy. Mm -hmm. I defend everything, and then I take on h6. Mm -hmm. But of course, when you don't really know these things, the move bishop a5 is kind of scary because you put your bishop mm -hmm. on the queen side. It's, it's not something that I wanted to do, so I played the move d5. Uh, and here he played bishop e2 pretty much instantly, which is <clears throat> sort of the move I was most afraid of. Uh, this was interesting, but I think black has the move castle. Um, and the point here is that if queen takes knight, rook e8, uh, <laughs> thank you, Anton, uh, queen takes knight, rook e8, and um, the queen is lost. 
And so, and of course he can't take knight takes knight because my bishop is pinning his knight. Um, and if he goes d takes c7, I can't take this guy because now he can take since I no longer have rook e8 because my queen is no longer defending. Uh, but I thought queen d4 here, and I thought this was a very interesting position. And actually just to show the kind of scary, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on c3, and just to show the kind of scary points for white is, let's say he goes a3, because my thread here is knight takes c3, b takes c3, bishop takes c3, yeah. But if he goes a3, now if I have to do something like this, uh, to me it looked pretty decent for white. I don't know, some bishop move. And the point is, uh, if we do a material count, for now white is up a pawn. Even if he loses a pawn, he you has still the... have the bishop here, your knight is a bit awkward. Exactly, exactly, that's exactly right. And so I thought that this was pretty good for white. But just to show the kind of scary initiative that black has, I thought maybe even such a move as this uh, is interesting. And now if queen takes, then bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes f2, king here, and knight takes c3 would be checkmate. So, I mean, this is absolutely not forced, of course, but it just shows the, the dangers that... Um, that uh, white is facing also the move rook e8 yeah. and yeah, after pawn takes dodging. maybe now bishop g4 for mm -hmm. example it's it's extremely scary um to play this as a like for example uh, queen takes and i think i think does this work queen takes king here i'd be shocked if white takes, can survive takes takes check takes takes Bishop here, oh, that's mate. and it's mate, yes. But ah, but queen d4. queen d4 takes takes. I guess this does not work because you have to do something like this. And in the end, black is down probably down too, too much, much material. Um, Bishop e1 mates in which line? Ah, but sorry, but of course here I'm, oh, I'm completely e1. blind, yeah, of completely blind. <laughs> so as you can see, guys, uh, thorough analysis and uh, always <laughs> under control. And uh, it just goes to show you don't really need uh, openings theory. You don't need to actually study opening theory in 2019, contrary to popular belief. You can just uh, bluff your way, uh, bluff your way through the, through every game. Okay, so Bishop E2 though, just ignoring, uh, I mean, just basically accelerating his development. It's a good move. And, I, and now again, I wasn't sure exactly how to play, but I went Queen E7 because I want that. A very uh, long point. thing. So what were you, 20, almost 24 minutes? Yeah. What were you thinking about? Uh, basically, I was thinking about how not to lose. <laughs> that was my, <laughs> genuinely, that was pretty much where my, my energy was uh, going into, uh, trying to find the safest path. Um, because there were a lot of options. For example, bishop e6, I thought was a, one option. The move c6 was another option. Um, I could take immediately, I could play castle, I could play the move f5, I could play the move f6. This is the horror of when you don't know the theory, the problem is you're overwhelmed. Also, I guess you were expecting that it was very likely that Connor still knew what he was doing. Uh, given the fact that he played bishop e2 after barely more than a minute, I mean, I, I was pretty pretty confident like that he, that he did know what was going on. Um, yeah, but actually he told me after the game that this is basically where the theory for him ended. Okay. Um, so bishop e2 was the last move, and I went queen e7. And after castle, now I played uh, bishop takes c3. I, I don't really want to give up my bishop, uh, but I don't think I can avoid it. For example, I can't castle because now he can either take here on e4 or even take here on d5. It's, it's actually, crushing. some... Oh, no, never mind. So... Uh, so therefore, I have to relieve the pressure here on d5, so I took on c3. Uh, I can't take with my knight, because if I take with my knight, then pawn takes, and now I have to move my bishop, and then mm -hmm. this guy is falling, and if I take here, then bishop comes to f4. It looked to me like, you know, bishop b5 check coming, rook e1. It looks like my lack of development is really a big problem. So, okay, after castle, I took on c3, take on c3, and now I castled. Again, uh, I spent uh, all, almost 10 minutes. My big question was, should I take the pawn immediately or should I wait? Um, in the end, I was worried about taking the pawn immediately, I think, because bishop f4, queen takes c3, 
something, I think it was this line, bishop d3. His threat is just to take on e4, because after he takes on e4, let's say I castle, uh, he takes on e4, and now I, yes. my queen is hanging, and if I take, he plays back like this. Mm -hmm. And so because of this trick, I don't have moves like bishop f5, because again, mm -hmm. take, my queen is hanging. So then I would have to do something with the queen, probably. Again, there's no move. I don't know, maybe queen here. And I thought this is... I actually had looked at this line, and I thought this particular variation was fine. I was holding here, but I was a bit afraid of something else now I can't recall. I don't know if the subscriptions are showing up, but I see them in the chat. So thank you very, very much for subscribing. And Nania Business, 64. And just none if someone business. Can, none of your business. None of your business. It's kinda like, you know, <laughs> none of your it. business. It's Thank you. Sixty-four because Very of the deep. number of squares on the chessboard. <laughs> if someone, you gotta explain usernames. Yeah, if cool. someone can let me know if the subscriptions are showing up on screen because I saw the donations are and the follows are, so I'd be shocked if the subscriptions are on. So so Chessweave is saying isn't Bishop A three an option? Yeah, Bishop A three and now Queen takes C three. Uh, I think the, I think I I certainly looked at something like this, and I think I didn't see anything. I think it was okay, just about okay. But we can wait in case Chessweep suggests something here. So I, if I take, I don't get any anything. If I take and I play. Bishop f3? No. No, I didn't. Should be okay because I if the queens come off. I have a bunch of pawns for now. I mean, no. I'm currently up two pawns, so I should be able to give maybe one max, maybe at most yeah. both back in order to. It, this didn't feel to me. <laughs> Chess Fear says, nah, his pocket fruit <laughs> needs more time. <laughs> um, so I I don't know. This didn't, this didn't feel, but I think. What was the issue? Was it bishop f4 or was it maybe c takes d5? Now I'm struggling to recall exactly. Maybe it was just c takes d5 that was that was a little bit worrying for me. Um, maybe it'll turn out that I should have just captured immediately. Mm. And I, I'm completely clueless. Um, I castled though because I thought this seems a bit safer. Just, mm. you know, bishop pair, I want to get my king to I mean, save. it's these sort of positions, if you just miss one move or miscalculate, like you'll just very likely be lost on the spot. Yeah. Better yeah. safe than sorry. Exactly. Um, so, okay, so here I have level material. Um, and I thought, I felt like the worst of it was over mm. for me because I'm not sure exactly where white could have improved mm. because I don't know that I played... Um, that I played the best line or anything like this. I don't think I did. So I'm not certain exactly where white could have improved. Uh, but here, my opponent thought the longest think of the game by far for him. And actually, perhaps the almost longest think. Almost 40 minutes. Yeah, so he thought almost 40 minutes in this position and eventually played his next move and offered a draw, which was this move, bishop c4. Probably a lot of the thing was related to the draw for as well, I suppose. Do I want to, what do I want from this position I have? Yeah, sort yeah. Sort of thing. But absolutely, and, and, but also I think it's just, it's not an easy position mm. for him because uh, there's a few options that he has and it's not clear where he should go. I mean, let's say if he goes bishop f4, I can take this pawn and, mm -hmm. Suddenly, uh, soon I'll develop my pieces and things are going to be okay. Uh, if he goes bishop d3, maybe here I go f5 and I'm threatening to take the pawn on d5 and he can't go c4 because this guy is hanging. Um, so in the end, his move bishop c4, also he told me after the game, he spent a lot of time considering this possibility of queen. Mm -hmm. So two main moves here. One is the conservative move, knight d6. Uh, try to just keep the position solid. Actually, I played out the whole uh, the whole Queen C3 line, but with the engine. <laughs> What's the objective evaluation? Complete equality. Yeah, I thought I suspected more or less as much. Yeah, and Queen true. Five CC is in the chat. Hello, Blair, one of my most faithful moderators. Almost always there from the states. Two days in a row. Now, yesterday was a day off. I assume two days ago. 
but I will be streaming for the next five days, uh, the last five rounds of the Irish Championship. I'm in Dublin. For those of you who are just joining us now, we're just looking at the board one game together with international master Alex Lopez uh, going through his game against Conor O'Donnell. So yeah, so this line... No, what did we... That's not the line that I meant. I meant uh, uh, queen, queen takes, takes knight, e4. yeah. Queen takes knight. Now queen takes rook. Bishop a3. Bishop a3. Queen f6, I yeah. guess. He was saying maybe also queen c3, but I think queen f6 was the line I was looking at. I don't know. Bishop takes, yeah. king takes, I mean, queen, queen takes, takes g6. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something like this, yeah. I mean, I considered maybe I could play this and the game goes on. But the thing is, I felt probably there's something like this and it's probably equal. Mm -hmm. But if I get something wrong, if I miss something, then it's going to be potentially advantageous to white. You know, uh, I don't... I and the other line you were looking at, so queen c3, the queen swap? Yeah, I also thought that the queen swap is probably <laughs> also equal, although this I would have been quite happy with. I was much more concerned about queen takes knight. So here I don't know uh, exactly what move, but I thought something like this. And I was looking at line like uh, this, 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 rook takes. And in the end it should be probably also... A draw, but maybe. Sorry, sorry. I should take. He should take with. He should go. He should go with this guy, so that there's no pin. Takes. Bishop here. Let's say takes, takes, takes. Some kind of position like this. So more or less everywhere that I looked, it was draws, and I had very little time by the end of considering all these lines. So I thought. Also, I mean, considering your tournament situation, so let's just um, once again look at that and then we'll get to, to the next board soon. But So you're leading on four and a half out of five. Maybe you can tell us a few words about the first four games. I mean, you won all of them, but how happy were you with your play? Were there any critical moments? <laughs> they were not especially <laughs> memorable, to be honest. They were low quality, low quality games. Mm -hmm. um, where I just caught some lucky breaks, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that there was anything too, too crazy about the games. I mean, one of them was a very long grind. It was the longest game of the tournament where towards the end, I'll, I'll just show. Well, actually, for those of you, I think there's maybe a couple of you in the chat that were with me because I was streaming while you were playing that game uh -huh. and we were looking at this ending. And when I ended the stream, I concluded it was going to end in a draw, but no. Yeah. He went wrong at the very last, I would say the very last hurdle, really. Yeah, basically, yeah, in this position here, but okay, he has a minute and a half yeah, left course. on the clock, yeah. and he has this decision, he has to either go to d2 or to b2, and he went to b2, and that loses, basically here, 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 uh, he loses the race, mm -hmm. because uh, the problem is I win all these pawns, and then I... He also queen with check. Exactly. He queens first, but I queen with check. And as a result, if it wasn't check, maybe he would go queen g4 check, okay. win the pawn on h4, and it would be everything would be okay. But the check is 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 really bad for him because now it's going to be two pawns mm -hmm. against uh, none. Um, but the thing for him was he had very little time. He's also uh, one of the kind of the veterans of the tournament. And I think obviously that can also, uh, that fatigue can work against you. And so he had to sort of roll a dice. He wasn't clear and he should have gone to D2, uh, but lucky nothing. for me, he yeah. didn't. Uh, there is nothing, if you look at it with an engine, it's very easy. Yeah, I, I actually, because I did have the engine on, but then I, I turned it off and I was like, even without an engine, like what would you be afraid of here? King D3, here. King D3. Like I was wondering what's your best try and I guess I'll just go back because I, maybe are you trying to say king d4 loses to king c2? No, no, I'm just, I have no idea. Okay, king d3. <laughs> now I'll push. Now you're going to check me. Be very careful because now your king is on a queening square. Oh yeah. So this line loses. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, 
Okay, so it wasn't as easy as I thought with the engine. No, like when it's when it's especially as you said after such a long game and with such little time. Exactly. Uh, I think he saw he saw ghosts. I mean, the thing is, what you can do is in such a position as this. I think you can just go king d4, and then if I go king c2, and now he press he can push, and if I go b4, etc. Yeah, but I'd be afraid of take. Takes takes. I think it was. I think it's like this here, 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 here. Now it's takes takes. I think you just take this guy. Was it or take the other guy? I don't no, you take here, and then this is actually a, a big problem for black, because mm. this guy, king g4. Mm. Uh, and now if I go king h2, then king takes h4. So black can't go in for this line, because he actually loses. Mm. Um, but it's if he doesn't have king g4, maybe he loses. So these king and pawn endgames, they're, they're, never, they're never trivial, because by the time you always, by the time you hit the king and pawn endgame, you're usually low on time and low on energy. Actually, maybe you can show us the moment we looked at it on stream, but very few people, I guess, will have seen it. But the moment, um, I mean, you had to reach the winning position. Yeah. And the moment where you let go of that and you can explain what yeah. happened. This is traumatic, traumatic moment. Here, I had this position, uh, so I'm up a pawn, and my pieces are more aggressively placed, so life is good. Um, but here, at this moment in time, I, I spent to have a quite a long think, 16-minute uh, think. And basically, I was considering two possibilities. Uh, one is the move I played in the game, which is this move d3. And the other is this move rook c7. And both of them looked to be pretty much winning. Mm -hmm. um, but it turned out that rook c7 was the best try. And, and basically, I threatened to take on c2. He must go bishop b1. Now I play d3. And he can basically take, or he can go c3, but I won't have this. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say he takes it. Um, let's say he takes it, I will go king b3, and then if he does something like this, I will push, and he he can't move because he loses the bishop, and sooner or later I will maybe put my rook on d4 or something, I will take on b2 or take on d3, I don't know mm -hmm. exactly, I, I, yeah. but this should be just be winning. Um, so what you missed when playing you know, chess, we were saying it's a sad bishop on b1 indeed. Yeah, I mean, and also I thought here, here, he can play rook b6, rook c5, bishop takes d3, because if rook d5, he has rook takes b5. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so this, this I can't do, but he can just take, I can take here, take here, take here, king here, let's say, I give this check, king here, I take. Uh, take can you even can you instead of can you go so back instead of rook exactly. c four just a few moves can you even just stay on the fifth rank yeah or? maybe this is uh, also very good I oh, was a bit F, uh, no F5 because f five king e four yeah but uh, mm -hmm. I mean maybe this is also winning but the line that I was looking at also maybe takes takes and rook b three is yeah. just the simplest actually for sure mm -hmm. and now I just want to keep on pushing the pawn and actually I I got as far as this in the analysis. Mm -hmm. And this is, I should be shot for this, but basically I rejected this just because I, I was worried the king will come in and take the pawns. And I thought, oh, this is less clean than I'd like, which is completely But, but you missed, so you played d3 in the game. So I played d3, and the point behind this was that I thought if he goes uh, c3 here, king c5, I thought he doesn't have time to prevent rook e7 and rook e2. And he can't risk that, and if he, because if he goes bishop b1, rook e7, yes, he can take the pawn, but now I go back to d7 and the bishop falls. Mm. So, uh, but what I missed, and so I spent, then I thought, okay, that's that, and then c takes, bishop takes d3, I'm threatening to discover, rook check, king moves, bishop here, and I thought rook c2 is coming, and it's gonna be game over. I even looked at a line like, for example, king here, like now I can give just this check, and if he has to go back, now I just go here, rook c2, and I will win even more cleanly. We talked about the sand bishop on b1, but the bishop on a2 is also quite sad. Yeah, and but he played c3 immediately, and then he played b4, and I wanted to, to rage. I'm a very calm person. Uh, I never rage, but if I did rage, this would be a moment to rage.
well, it did happen in the game. How did you feel when before... I was I was raging? Because <laughs> <I was laughs> really basically, raging. after before the position is just a draw. Yeah, exactly. So takes bishop takes, and the point is now after this he gets back here, and now I can't yeah, break through. He controls the only open yeah. file that's kind of relevant. Yeah. I have an extra pawn, but look at my structure. In fact, in the next move I went rook e six, and he kept the rooks on the board. But taking was a But he could already take and. And this, yeah, would, good, this would have good. also been a draw, but it makes sense to keep the rooks on the board just so he doesn't low on time have to think. Chris Chris Smith is in the chat and he's saying he's having a deja vu because he was with me two days ago when we looked at this. Uh, thank you, Chris, for subscribing seven months in a row. Chris, uh, who played here in Dublin in the, in the weekend the last year where we met, so good to see you, Chris. Shame. You're not over this year. Visim is here. Visim, good to see you. Hello, Visim. <laughs> and also uh, Gormeli Fan Club, formerly known as Pass 199, saying very instructive and game lessons, as always, Alex. And a special welcome, of course, to Blazer Row. Blazer Row, one of my most faithful um, viewers and friends. I met him at the crypt event with Simon. So a long time no see, which I know is my fault, but yeah. Good to see you, and truth has been high. high In the game. meantime, let's not forget WCH355, who says, the guy drink water, question mark. I don't know what he's talking about, but <laughs> if you're talking about how drinking water, I'm, he basically, I read that and I thought to myself, you know what, yeah, let's fine. drink your glass of water. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so that one was Let, maybe... Maybe let's talk about... Sorry, let, let's maybe talk about games that aren't my own. Yep. <laughs> <How about laughs> I was that? just going to say. So let's uh, go back. So today there are still almost all games uh, are still on the way. Uh, Gavin Malaf has lost to uh, Joseph Ryan, whose game we were just looking at. He was the unlucky opponent yeah. here in the, the weekend day. Alex Byrne has beaten Tom O'Gorman, so that's a, a big win for, yeah, Tom for is, Alex. Tom's having a poor tournament. He's, one of the, a he's a FIDE master, one of the youngest FIDE yeah. masters. He's maybe seven, 16, 17, but he's not having a good one. He's dropping 30 points. Hmm, he's dropping 30 points, two out of five. Still four rounds to go, but uh, it will be a tough time salvaging this tournament. Then Paul Wallace... Going down to Jared O'Connell, a draw between Kevin Butler and Anthony Fox. Uh, Diana, Diana scored a, a win against Hake. Diana started well. I watched her first round game. Or like, no, she played Tom O'Gorman, and she found this very nice tactical shot. I don't know if you even saw it. Uh, we're not going to have a look at it now, but uh, if you're a Diana fan or if you have an interest in what I'm talking about, uh, check out her one. Round one game against Tomo Gorman, where she went from losing to winning in one move, and then in the end it was a draw, but she could, could have pressed on. Anyway, on to board two we go. Stephen uh, Brady, let's turn the board back around, watch it from the proper side. The battle of the Stevens, and all I know is I hope it's not a draw, because... Uh, I know what's going to happen, <laughs> but uh, I won't spoiler it for you guys. The audience can stay keenly, keenly tuned Alex, in. Alex came up with no, a, no, 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 a brilliant. No, I'm, I won't, I won't spoil it. I'm but. happy. I'm actually. I insist that you take full credit for it. <laughs> for me, it doesn't meet my joke standards. But uh, Alex you know. came up with a brilliant joke last night regarding that game when I saw the pairings. Maybe you can guess it. What happens if it's a draw? And we'll let you figure it out. For now, let's have a look at the game. Because Stephen Moran with the black pieces, um, just a very quick look before we look at the games. One last look at the standings. So this includes uh, the results from round five already. So Alex here is on four and a half. His opponent, Conor O'Donnell, on four. Ryan, uh, Joseph Ryan, who's won his game on three and a half. But the only man who can catch you is Stephen Moran, who's playing with the black pieces. Correct. Uh, Steven's having a great tournament. This is in the live ratings. It's the first time <laughs> in his life. None of your business. He's, he's With such too a good. nickname. Too good. <laughs> of you course, he was going to get it. And even I, Steven. I find it hilarious. <laughs> For those of you who appreciate terrible puns, uh, it's, uh, it's a good joke for all, all you who uh, you know, have a kind of self respecting sense of humor. You'll understand it's not a very good joke, but uh, <laughs> anyway, that is the joke. Um, 
Okay, so this game, what? how do you want to do this? Do you want to... Maybe just go back a few moves. I don't want to go from the start, especially yeah. Steve Moran, only seven minutes on the clock for 15 moves. Still, it was an Alepin. Uh, I had a brief okay. look at it. I, I mean, if you no, want to quickly talk us through it. I, I just want to maybe make one point for those, for the Irish players, actually, uh, amongst the... Um, this is a surprise. Because Steven, I mean, I haven't looked at his recent, maybe it's not such a surprise, maybe the last six months he's been doing this. But Steven went like 20 years playing the French. Okay. So to see a Sicilian is quite unusual for Steven. So he's working hard on his, uh, on his chess, uh, making progress. He became a very serious player. I think he, he, for example, read a bunch of the Yusupov books, for those of you who are familiar with them. Um, so the, he, Steven is a good example of someone who's you know twenty one hundred ish for a long time, and now he's you know breaking into twenty two hundred plus. And Steven is maybe late twenties or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, for those of you who are kind of you know, I talked to Johnny Machine earlier, and uh, he put single Steven out as one of his I am no hopes for the tournament. But I think it's still a long way. Probably needs seven out of nine, but. Um, <sighs> I mean, it's a good start, of course. It's a great start. Yeah. Uh, draw against Boren, uh, a win against Fide Master Henry Lee, a win against Fide Master Conor mm -hmm. Murphy. And he, I think at first glance, it seems like uh, he's he's in a position to hold mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Brady today. But we'll see. Uh, basically, it's a, it's an Alapin. I don't know too much about it, so we'll, we'll glance through it. We'll skim through it. And around here is kind of where I first saw the position. And I thought... Um, it seems fine. I mean, basically, Stephen has won the bishop pair. But on the other hand, Stephen... Uh, Maybe we need to... No, I wanted to call them both ah. Stephen for confusion. You know? Just to... <laughs> well, right. just to yeah, Straight just, forward. You foiled my plans. You know, I planned on at least <laughs> saying Stephen like 10 times. But you picked it up on the second time. Um, so, yeah... Irish humor says none of your business. Yeah. They're very funny over here. They're extremely funny. Uh, so I've heard. So, but yeah, so anyway, the bishop pair here for white, but a very solid position for black with an extra pawn in the center. Doesn't, I prefer white here, but it doesn't seem, you know, with this strong central knight on d5. It looks to me like Black got a very reasonable position out of the open. Man from Mars says, 20 years on the French, wow, he'll never get them back. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Mr. Mars. Um, okay, so basically Stephen Brady is very happy. Stephen Brady is one of the, like, I think he's won the Irish nine times. Mm. Uh, really one of the guys uh, who has won the Irish uh, most frequently. I don't know who has won it most. I think it's either Stephen Brady or Colin Bailey, both of whom are playing in this tournament. Um, but they're the more, some of the more kind of senior players in the event. Yeah, there's one thing actually I meant to say at the start of the show, but I never got around. But this year's tournament is probably the strongest Irish championship ever. Yeah, uh, certainly this year, uh, as has been the case for the last uh, almost 10 years, they, don't, it, they reserve it only for uh, Irish, mm. uh, Irish Federation players. There were a few stronger Irish, but they were open, open to yeah. any nationality. Since they've become closed events, um, this one is billed as the strongest. Uh, because basically all the top players are, are there. Um, so, yeah, so but Stephen anyway having a good tournament. And here, I guess... To me, it looks like Steven should be happy with what he's got here. I don't know what you think. Well, I, I think the only question is, uh, can the bishop pair make a difference? Yeah. And but also, I mean, I've always learned it's better to have a pawn majority on the queen side than on the king side. So those two factors. So my guess would be white is slightly better, but is it really enough? No, I mean, I, I think it's unpleasant, actually. At first sight, I thought it was okay, but I think your assessment is exactly right. I mean, the bishop pair and the queen side pawn majority. Those are the, the concerning factors. Um, and white's king is pretty solid as well, so I wouldn't like to be black here, you know? I mean, you... You know, if I... I you know how I am when the chat, I think people will also know. I like to create attacking chances, even if there is a very little material left. Like, I'm even wondering, can I in some cases play h4 h5 like he's actually just stopped me playing if he hadn't gone bishop f6 i would have been off 
because I want to just get to age six, ideally. I mean... Or is, there, is it better to play this position or position? I have no idea. Sometimes H4, H5 is, is, a, good, is a good thing to do. Uh, like, yeah, you can play something, I don't know, something like this, and then, you know, whatever, and then here. And then usually this is going to be met by H5. And then you can speak of whether or not, mm. um, whether or not this, is, this is an improvement. But I think, yeah, I think you're, you're quite heavily influenced by the, the so-called Harry attack. Yeah, Blazer Row knows it well. Yeah, friend of Simon's, you can tell. Yep. Ginger GM. And uh, meanwhile, chess weave. So Dennis Boros is saying the carp of in him would like to play bishop e4 instead of my h4. Bishop e4, okay. Bishop e4 looks nice. Um, and then... Well, so what's the plan? What is White's plan? I guess he wants to eventually make use of the queenside majority. Yeah. What do you want? I mean, how does White improve in this position, my question? I mean, I guess that what uh, Dennis is worried about is that if you play a move like queen c4 to start pushing, the, rolling the pawns off the board, then knight e5 mm -hmm. is a huge um, sort of bit of success for uh, for white, for black, because mm -hmm. he gets the bishop off the board. But if you play first bishop e4, mm -hmm. now I think, you know, if he does whatever, some some waiting move, let's say, now queen c4, if you go knight e5, now the d3 square is covered as well. So you can go queen c5, and you've made some progress while at the same time blundering the pawn. So don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do not do that. Do something else. I don't know, queen here or something. And now, let's say, I'm threatening to take on b7, knight here, and now queen b6. And this is, I think, how you make progress. I'm just sorry, I got a bit sidetracked. Uh, what happened there? What was Have that? a meal on me tonight. Oh, Blazer Road, thank you so, so much. That's another incredibly generous donation of 50 euro. We will have a meal on you tonight. Actually, talking of meals, I just one second ago got distracted by the the comment in the chat, Astani seems like Pomodoro Italian streamer. And I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever that means. Also, a man from Mars was saying, Black needs to trade the dark squared bishops to play for a win. I wasn't sure if he was being serious or not. Um, I don't think Black is playing for a win here. I wasn't sure if I should take it with pinch of salt. Meanwhile, stay hydrated, bot. It's my bot which tells is, me to drink water. This is an excellent bot. I know, yeah. Definitely. I've been live for just over an hour. Should have consumed at least 120 ml of water. This is this is high level. You've <laughs> got a hydration bot. I know. I, I actually don't know really. Like it just appeared out of nowhere someday. But yeah, Blazer, thank you so so much. Uh, it's good to be back streaming and I won't disappear again. And we'll have a a meal on you. A meal on me? No one. <laughs> you just received over 100 euro donations. <laughs> no. I had a meal uh, on, now, now on, meal on me. So you're about plus, plus 130, right, for the stream. It's not bad. It's not bad, guys. So, uh, I know men from Mars, okay, it was a typo. It was not a joke. He's saying that he need, he thinks white needs to trade the dark squared bishops to play for one. No, I, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, I think you want to keep the bishop pair. I think literally white just needs to figure out a good moment to start pushing the pawns. I think that this game is going to be, in a sense, we could move away because I think this is going to be a long attempted grind by white. Well, also, uh, one reason that I'm... No, so this is... So, okay, excuse me. Black has just played knight a5. One of the things I'm a bit concerned about uh, is the time situation as well. Like you could argue, oh, there's not so many pieces on the board, but still, I think it's a position where black needs to be quite accurate. And he's only got seven minutes for 13 moves. It's yeah. not that much. So we'll, we'll come back to this one. Uh, will you stick around for a little bit longer? Um, yeah, <laughs> sure. Why do you ask? Are you going to take a little break? Now? No, no, I oh, won't okay. take a break. Yeah, let's just. Show another game. Being cannot, polite. Cannot get enough of <laughs> chess. High level, high level Irish chess here. 
So, okay, we'll get to the, the sisters now. Uh, first to Tarun, who's playing against the top seed, Sam Collins, and then to Trisha. Maybe, can I just say, maybe Tarun will be a little upset to being referred to as the sisters. Uh, no, the siblings. Didn't I say the siblings? I don't know. It's on stream, <laughs> so we'll see. I heard sisters. but uh, <laughs> I meant to say the siblings, of record course. on stream. <laughs> the Kanye Morella siblings, Tarun and Trisha, both of whom having a fantastic tournament so far, both on three out of four. They both on successive days. C.A. Smith. <laughs> I know. Uh, shout out Damn to you, Mr. C.A. Smith. Uh, okay, is. everyone's Oof. ganging up. Oof. <laughs> the siblings. Oof. So uh, Tarun uh, and Trisha, they took out uh, Mark Quinn, international master Mark Quinn, on consecutive days. And both, from what I, could, from what I saw, have been playing great chess. Uh, Blaze Rose says, uh, I heard there is only one GM in Ireland. That is correct. Uh, it's Alex Baburin. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think especially Johnny, Mr. Johnny Machine is desperately waiting for the second. There's been a, a bit of a race, I would say, between yourself and uh, Sam Collins. Sam has the advantage. I would say more than a race, it's been like spinning around <laughs> in a hamster wheel. <laughs> Like that's the kind of race it's been because we've both been at the same rating for the last seven or eight years. So it's a kind of a race I mean, in the sense that miles are being logged, but no yeah. actual progress is being but made. But Sam has, uh, over you, he has the fact he has the three norms. He has the three and norms. And he was very, very close. Is it 24.99? Yeah. 24.98, 99, something like this. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's definitely on paper the favorite. Um, he... Yeah, he's a he's a very very strong, very talented player. Um, I would say very um, knowledgeable mm. player, very serious player. Uh, so I think you know it's kind of a roll of the dice whether he makes it or not. The pros in his favor are he has tremendous experience, tremendous knowledge, uh, tremendous skill. He's very very close to that strength. The cons is that he's juggling you know a full time okay. job, which is I think he is a barrister, some type of lawyer for those of you outside of outside of Ireland uh, or the UK. And um, yeah, it's never easy, right, to push mm. for the GM title while, while yeah. having uh, a job and, and all of this. And also chess is a young man's game, as we see here, you know, I feel I'm 32 and I start to feel a bit like old, you know, when I see players like Kanye Marala, um, Tom O'Gorman, Henry Lee, so many players under the age of 18. And Sam is about five years older than me, so, you know, both of us are sort of conscious of that, mm. I think. Um, yeah, and man from Mars is saying, watch out, one of these kids might be Ireland's next GM. And you're actually, uh, you were saying to me earlier today, you think uh, you think it's very possible that Tavon, if he keeps going, yeah. he will be GM's, right? And let's take a look. Let's see what's actually, what's going on here. So, first of all... Uh, Can I do a pawn count? Da -da. Okay, black is a pawn down. Yes, but, but he's an exchange. We'll do a piece count, <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's looking like only black can press. Um, okay, well, so another question I have is are you going to be able to defend d5? Because if I can collect d5, then suddenly I'm not so unhappy, I guess. No, I mean, of course, if, if, you, if you could take d5, you if would. If it be was my happy. move, I'd be very happy. Well, I mean, if it was your move, you would go bishop g4. And lose to queen takes up two and mate. <laughs> right? But that's obviously not what I would do. That's what you would do, right? But uh, I would definitely never blunder that. Um, so. Okay, Sam has taken uh, a different approach. Yeah, so it's, it was Sam's move, and rook b1 makes a lot of sense, just forcing the pieces off the board. Mm -hmm. But I want to just go back to this position, which I thought was kind of interesting. So, queen's gambit, uh, queen's gambit declined. Uh, on the board and we have this kind of uh, like a, a Carlsbad structure um, this this is maybe I think not the best uh, strategy from uh, Kanye Marala but what to do I mean the thing is Sam is a very classical classical kind of player he knows a lot so Sam is going to be very comfortable in these positions because he's he's uh, he's seen many games, he's played many games over the years, and experience really can tell, uh, counts for a lot. But uh, Tarun is a very mature player for his young age, he's very mature, 
Um, a lovely, lovely kid, actually. I played him yesterday, so we were analyzing afterwards. He's a lovely kid. Has a very, very good uh, positive mindset and certainly one of the one of the, the bigger talents in, in Irish chess. By the um, way, Johnny Machine has just chimed in a bit late on the, uh, the GM ways uh, discussion. He's saying it's a race to the bottom. And he's actually saying uh, apparently his life rating was 2499.2, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, I, I like how Johnny Machine just keeps extremely close tabs on everyone in Irish chess. <laughs> he knows to, he actually knows it to the nearest, not even to the nearest uh, whole number, you know, just the, he goes in, in, in decimals or whatever. Uh, so, okay, so here we can see, for example, that Tarun in this relatively standard position, he'd spent 40 minutes playing this move knight a4, mm. which speaks to his passion about the game. Mm. He loves to, like he focuses, he's not afraid to think and knuckle down and, and he's not a lazy player. You know, a lot of players who are juniors, they play lazy superficial chess. He really tries to find the best moves, but he still, you know, needs to pick up a lot of experience. Uh, maybe 40 minutes is a bit risky time management. We haven't mentioned the age in a while. I mentioned at the start of the show, but he's only 14 years old. Yeah. And his sister, Trisha, whose game we'll get to next, she is 13. Absolutely. Uh, so here, what was interesting is it went rook d3, which is a bit of an unusual move. Um, Where is that rook? I guess to b3. I guess that's his idea, to put pressure on b7. But it seems a bit artificial. To me, it looks like Sam has gotten... A nice position here, he's rerouted the knight to d6, defending b7, doesn't have many weaknesses, he has nice uh, pressure along the semi-open e-file, bishop is out of the chain there on g4. It looks to me like Sam is giving a nice nice uh, positional lesson of sorts. Um, but still, white is quite solid and should be much worse. It's interesting, rook d3, bishop f5, rook went back, mm -hmm. and now bishop g4, inviting him to play rook d3. And you can see that after less than half a minute, he went back. And now Sam had a bit of a thing for 11 minutes and decided, no, I will play. Mm. I'm not going to take a draw. I'm 200 points high rated than you at least. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm going to play h5 and I'm going to put white to the test. And what put do you do? Harry on h5. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is, this is, I'm pretty this sure exactly, <laughs> exactly what he was thinking. Come Harry. Uh, yes, with the, the silent cheer. I, I have no doubt about it. And so here white went back, <clears throat> I guess vacating the oh. d3 square, and Harry continues. <laughs> oh, look who's in the chat. Our favorite. Ah, yes, Frozen Edge, <laughs> welcome to the chat. Uh, it's good to see you, and Frozen has heard the rumors about From the, me. Yeah, the draw. It's good to, good to know. Uh, so, yes, uh, bishop not quite uh, frozen. Okay, bishop takes, takes, queen g5, and now knight c5, here, here. And Sam is just defending his weakness on b7. And uh, now again, I, I feel like Tarun is maybe struggling to figure out what to do in this position. It's really hard because there's a... Um, there's a book that's quite well known by uh, Axel Smith uh, called Pump Up Your Rating. And this book is, uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good book. And many club players, many of my students and that, they have this book. And one of the things that uh, he talks about in it, in it is that if you don't have a pawn break, it's very hard to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at this position, where are the pawn breaks for, um, for white? He has no pawn break. Uh, he can't play e4 because that's uh, yeah. too firmly controlled by black. Uh, he can't play a pawn push here because that's controlled. And pushing these pawns, uh, it's going to take a long time and he's not really set up for it. So you've, uh, you've struck a chord in the chat play. Zoro says he has the book. And uh, Gromali Fan Club wants to know, have you read it? I've, I have the book, I've scanned it, uh, because so many of my students scanned like it. scanned it. Uh, I thought you wanted to say skimmed it, but you said scanned it. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go on record here for, uh, for fraud. Uh, so, for, what, what is it, piracy? Um, 
so hold on a second. Sorry, I, I've, I've been so flustered by your comment that I'm nearly getting up. Oh, no. uh, no. This is what happens. This is going to start a, a bullet game. Or what no. did we do? This is what happens when you accuse your guests of, uh, of right, being like thieves. Just, you know, thieves. I just need to, to put this away. Uh, where were we? Where were we? Here? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, there is. Perfect. No, I'll, I can. Also, by the way, I just checked that this is all fine. Very soon I'm going to um, make sure. <laughs> of course, it's been clipped. Uh, make sure we get to the current position because of the time situation, not just in this game, but we're, very, uh, we're nearing the first time control. Uh, so we're going to see. <laughs> We're going to see what's going on in the games. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah, we can come. Uh, the problem is I can only probably have one person at a time. I don't think the setup... Fame no, 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 no. and fortune is for me, then. Um, okay, we're going to take a very brief... Uh, but can, can I... Maybe we'll just yeah, wrap up this, this uh, analysis very briefly. Two minutes, and then you come. Perfect. Okay, so two minutes to just wrap this up. So And we'll be joined by either Connor Murphy or Jonathan O'Connor. So, so here you see that basically Sam's strategy, in my opinion, is he has no, uh, he's, he's making it so that white has no pawn breaks. And now you need a lot of patience here as white. Probably you just need to accept, oh, my plan was kind of silly. I need to go back, put the rook back and sit tight for another 20 moves, right? And that's kind of what someone like Baburin, this is how he would play as white. And he would recognize I have no plan, but also my position is very solid. I'm not worse. Mm -hmm. What happens with youthfulness? They go launching in here, now the rook is a bit awkwardly placed, and now, next thing you know, a few moves later, uh, you know, he's sacrificing the rook, and that's sort of uh, probably what Sam wants. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm up material, and there isn't full compensation, and I will use that material advantage to grind you down. That's sort of the, the plan here. Uh, from Sam's so perspective. So that's the position, more or less, we the, saw. Yeah, but, however, here, queen c8 check, uh, king h7, knight takes a6, does pick up the pawn. Uh, Was knight f6 a blunder? I'm not sure. We'll see. Queen b1, king h2, and now queen f1. I guess that this is Sam's uh, idea, uh, but it doesn't seem very good. Queen c2 check, and now white is going to come in with knight c5. So I guess it is a blunder, and after my little speech about how Sam is going to outplay him, actually white now has two pawns, and with this uh, better structure, knight c5 is coming, and a4, maybe it actually turns out that uh, black is is better. I, I have no idea. What, how, what do you think is the evaluation of this position? I think something like g6 should happen. And now the question is, like, so the concern is with this uh, pawn wedge here on h4, white's king is a little bit, uh, potentially in a little bit of trouble. Uh, no, I refuse. I refuse to, <laughs> to, to go to you know, to go along with this Harry propaganda. Um, the thing is here, I like this move knight b4 maybe, just to make sure that there is no uh, rook move and the d5 pawn is under pressure. So if you have to go passive like this, personally, I don't think that uh, white is worse. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I, I think I would be quite happy suddenly. But the, the only problem is how do you actually, how do you play this for a win as white? You know, that I think is a real problem because um, if you're not careful, like if you push this pawn, the knight is unstable. Yeah, I would love to reroute my knight somehow, but I'm not sure where to or how. Uh, By the way, Gormali Fan Club says, feels like Alex has done this sort of grinding before in his own games. I think he's referring to what you're telling yeah. about Sam's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, maybe, sorry, I'm just being a little bit uh, distracted by the game, but like for example, queen c7 hits the rook and hits the pawn, uh, but let's say rook d7, queen f4, queen takes pawn, queen takes knight. This is kind of the, the point, check, check, and draw. So I think black is, my guess is that uh, objectively speaking it's Maybe white might be a little bit better even, possibly, I'm not sure. But um, if I had to guess, I'd say it would be a draw. 
Okay, interesting. I mean, c could we? It's okay. So G six, it's on board. Um, before, let's see what happened in the game. We will be joined by them in a second. So Connor Murphy beat uh, Jonathan O'Connor. So I guess um, Connor Connor Murphy will join us in a second. Before I let you go, a very quick look just at the current positions for your evaluation of Trisha against uh, David Fitzsimons and of uh, Alex Baburin against Killian Delaney. Just some quick fire assessment. This position. I'm going to do my material count first. One, two, three, six. Uh, my material count has revealed that if black takes on e5, it'd yeah. be two pawns up. Yeah, but the, the problem, but the problem the is this bishop, <laughs> this bishop is hanging, is hanging. with check, yeah? <laughs> okay. But everything is hanging. This position, I, I mean, have no idea. This position is it's insane. crazy, yeah? The, only, the problem as well is that Trisha only has one minute on the clock. But I feel like black should be in control. That's the first impression, because this guy is hanging. If this guy wasn't hanging... Then you'd be in trouble. But now this guy hangs, king here. Uh, and rook e5 has been played. Yeah, and now I guess just take, bishop takes. We're following king the here. game so far. Oh, really? So rook b1 is already on the board. Yeah, something like this will, will probably materialize, and then your material count mm -hmm. uh, remains what you counted, yeah. right? Two pawns to the good. Opposite colored bishop, still some work to be done, but I would expect David Fitzsimons to convert this. Mm. Uh, and quick, very quick look at, um, well, Ireland's only grandmaster, we've mentioned it before, Alex Baburin. Not many pieces left here on the board. So Alex Baburin with the white pieces, if you're wondering, the pawns, the black pawns are going down, they're coming this way. And what is this? Okay, so first, first off, uh, white cannot take here, because that's a stay -away. This is correct. So this was uh, Killian's devilish plan when he played a4. Now the question is, can white make progress here or not? And I will ask that question. Uh, I'll let you off the hook and I'll ask Connor and Jonathan that question. Absolutely. So I'll go on break now, uh, but we'll be back in literally just 30 seconds, so don't go anywhere. And thank you, Alex. Maybe we'll have you back later. Maybe thank not. Thank you for having me. Uh, but yeah, yeah, thank you and best of luck. Thank and you. we'll be right See back. See you guys. And we're back, and we're glad to be joined by Jonathan O'Connor. Jonathan, uh, this time around you're playing in the main event. Last year he was playing alongside me in the weekender. So first of all, what prompted the decision to join the big guys again? Uh, 
I had more time this year. Last year, I didn't have enough time mm -hmm. to play in the, the whole event. Uh, it's a long event. It's nine it's, days. It's nine days, and it meant I had I would have taken off for weeks, a week off work, and I didn't have the time that year. Um, so this year I do. Uh, and of course, last year was my Anus Arribalus. I had the worst tournament of my playing career, I would say, last year. Um, mm -hmm. And then I continued it playing the worst Armstrong, which is the, the first league in Ireland, um, for the rest of the year. And now I had, I got a little bit lucky in the first round. I, so let's have a look here. Okay. If we hover over your uh, name, um, it's been a good tournament for you so far. You beat Alex Byrne in the first round, then you beat Fila Master Henry Lee, then you drew against uh, Grandmaster Alex Babuin. Yeah, I was. I was. I, Henry was a funny one because Henry uh, is, you know, young. He's very sharp and he works at his game and. He decided he he did some trash talking uh, the <laughs> night before, and he I, I asked him whether he was going to play his his Schliemann, uh -huh. which he used to play. I don't know if he plays much anymore. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said, "Oh, I might play a Sicilian against you," and I didn't really believe him. So I prepared for like uh, e four e five, and he lashes out the Sicilian. He's never played. He's played one Sicilian in his whole life, his whole young life. Yeah. And Henry Lee, by the way, who those of you on Twitch might know as the Yellow Dragoon uh, fellow streamer. Ah, okay, right. Um, so Henry, anyway, Henry, Henry, Henry played that, and, and uh, I transposed to a King's Indian attack in a French-like position, which I thought he wouldn't know, and he didn't know the ins and outs, but he got a good position, and then he made one bad move on move twenty, and I just. Yeah. yeah, I think actually, do you? We could look at that game instead of uh, the game of today, if you prefer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Let's do that. So we're gonna go back in time. What was that round two? That's round two. Yeah. Round two. There we are. So we we'll look at uh, at Jonathan's game against Henry, aka the Yellow Dragoon, from round two, right. and then we'll get back yeah. to today's yeah, yeah, yeah. games. So anyway, Henry... Uh, I'll give okay. you the mouse. Uh, okay, you can right. just click yeah, through yeah, and yeah. if you want to input variations. Okay. BC0123 is saying, are you interviewing every single player? No, I think that might be a bit much. <laughs> uh, basically, I'm going to interview whoever enters this room <laughs> or whoever I I can, uh, you know... Persuade. Hassle yeah. <laughs> or what's the... Bully. Whoever I can right. manage to bully into this room. So anyway, Henry Henry surprised me with C5 and I had done zero preparation for it and I thought, okay, well. And then he plays E6, mm -hmm. which is very cunning because it avoids uh, me playing Bishop E5 and I thought, oh, I don't want to play some... And I play, I play against these open Sicilians with E6. I play them so badly because I don't know the theory. Mm -hmm. I've never really looked mm -hmm. it up. And I as thought, you said, I mean, you didn't expect... I didn't expect it, so yeah. I thought, okay, I will play something that Henry won't have looked at, and I played d3. And Probably a good practical decision. Yeah, and especially, like, I've been playing these kind of positions as, especially with the French style, uh, type position, as black for a zillion years, mm -hmm. and uh, I've, like, um, Tony Fox plays this as white or has done for many years. Mm -hmm. Stephen Brady used to play it a lot. Maybe he still plays it a bit. Um, and so I had, I was fairly familiar with these structures going back. By the way, uh, John McMorrow is in the chat. He's saying, hard luck, Jonathan. Great tournament so far. Great tournament in the first three rounds, John. Uh, not so great in the last two rounds, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, that's why Fiona is very nice. We're analyzing uh, my win here. Um, so uh, anyway, this is we played a few uh, book moves, and um, and now Henry plays. It goes into a French type position, and I thought, great, mm -hmm. he has never played the French. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know it. Yeah. So so you sort of turned the situation around because he plays c five. Exactly. Well, he's the yes. one who's surprised yeah. you, and yeah. suddenly you're back yeah. Yeah. into territory where you feel. You're more familiar with and, the and if you look if you look at the the, the times on the the, the clock he's mm. been, he burnt he, he thought for three minutes here and, mm. and okay so I had to figure out a few things because 
although I know these positions, I don't know them. I've never played them on the front of white side. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit strange yeah, when you sure. suddenly swap. Mm -hmm. You have and to get up and look at the board. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that doesn't even work. That doesn't even are you allowed sense. to do that? You are allowed to do that, I suppose. You Maybe could do. Not, you could look around. Yeah, you could. You can. You can get up and walk around. But not so long as you're not. Probably. No, I think you're still allowed so long as you probably, don't walk away yeah. from the board. Maybe. Be a bit, you probably, know, yeah, probably. No, yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> probably your opponent will object if you're kind of <laughs> sticking your head over his shoulder. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, so I played knight d2 here, and that just avoids uh, swapping off queens, because mm -hmm. if the pawn takes pawn, you want to be able to take with a pawn. Mm -hmm. um, and then what? Oh, he played. Yeah, he's knight. Yeah, around here I was also wondering. Um, in some of these variations, Black will swap on on e4 and then try and get his bishop out to a6. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't actually possible in the in these positions. And it's. It, yeah, oh, sorry, this is moved. Yeah. If if you tried, if I tried, can I make a? I yep, can make a very good chance. So yeah. if I if he tried uh, b6 here, I can go here, and I think if actually here he could, no, he could take. So what's uh, so if you take? If you could, he could take, and if I take with the pawn, then bishop he goes to bishop a6. Mm -hmm. Which was yeah, that's would be annoying. Can you take with the knight? I could take with the knight. I know I might ha I might I might be able to do I might be able to change the move order as well. Instead of playing bishop g two, I might be able to play uh, queen e two before that. I don't know, but I, these are the kind of things I was I was wondering about. Um, and uh, but he he continued with knight f six. Which is is more French like, and I just I went on with my bishop there, mm -hmm. and now he doesn't have the time. If he if he take I, I'm going to castle, mm -hmm. and um, if he tried b6 now I castle, and uh, if he takes I take bishop a6, and I, I can just go. Yeah, I can actually I show you now because I this this little variation I did calculate. Uh, and if he goes here, I go here. He goes here, I go here, and he doesn't have it's he can't get in. Mm -hmm. Um and I can play I can play a move like um A three and, and mm -hmm. I can slowly come out, I think. There was some variation where I could play knight C four, but I guess that's with the queen on E two. So um, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, we go back to standard. Uh, so can we play bishop e7? I castled. Uh, he played a6, and that's that was a sign in, uh, that he didn't. Re he doesn't know this position because in in these variations, uh, black doesn't worry, doesn't bother wasting a move with a6. You can play b5, uh, father a5 in one go, and. and and that's that shows his inexperience. I'm going to interrupt you for okay. a second. I'm wondering if we're gonna put. I think what we're going to do is we're gonna put this game on hold mm -hmm. for ten minutes. Okay. You'll stay with me, right? Because the time control is happening in ten minutes, and there okay. are a few yeah, people yeah, yeah. who are very low on time. So we'll come okay. back to this game. Yeah, I, I, had, think I, had just... I had one minute left on my clock. Uh, well, in fact, yeah. I, I had eleven today. seconds when I resigned. My yeah. position was so bad. Yeah, so I, I just wanna. I will time. check. Um, if there are any top board games, sure, yeah. Um, why can't I not? Because you you have to click on the more. Uh, let me just do it like this. Uh, and because sometimes there's so many games on the list, especially nowadays, I think with the European Youth yeah, Championships, yeah, sure, those add so many. I saw on Twitter they mentioned that the, the developers said they were making uh, some uh, improvements. In, uh, to they the, were about to the list of, to make it, of broadcast yeah, moves. I saw yeah. that as well. Okay, so we'll come back to, to okay. Jonathan's game. So Steve, Stephen has been playing fantastic chess uh, yeah. as well, and he and he's 
he's become a very solid player um, he knows a lot about he knows a lot of, of uh, on his French mm -hmm. and um, today he didn't play the French surprisingly <laughs> he played the Sicilian I can, I can Alex talked that. about that already oh did he okay right yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I think we'll just go here because Alex and I left the position of here. We thought White was slightly better. He has the bishop here, he has yeah. the queen side yeah. majority. Um, so we thought it would be a bit uncomfortable for right. Stephen Moran, so the, yeah. two, the two Stevens. Uh, and then, okay, so the queens get, get swapped. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure uh, who this favors. Who do you think the queen swap favors? Oh, I think I think it favors the bishops. Yeah. I, because the now pawns, now there's there's no there's no tricks in the position. They're still very far, but they already seem very threatening. Look like once yeah. they get rolling, they are yeah. be incredibly quick. Um, and yeah, Gomeli fan club in the chat also thinks right. they do favor right. So f five. Let's just get to the current position. Bishop f three, king f seven, b four, and mm -hmm. here come the pawns. Bishop c seven, yeah. c four. I think. Oh yes, not much. Um, oh, actually, well, what happens after here? B six. B six. Yeah. Bishop takes C six. So takes. Let's look at that. So B six. So the point is, you cannot keep the bishop on that diagonal to defend yeah. the B four pawn, and he has just played B six. Okay, right. He has been. For, he fought for four minutes and yeah, just went B six. Yeah. So let's look at this. Takes and then I would. Uh, yeah, yeah D, no, probably you don't take. The taking should be a draw. I guess. I mean, one white has won a pawn, but it's a double pawn. There's opposite colored bishops. True, true. No, you I don't would be like shocked. It. I don't think white has any winning chances. But here. if you, but if you push it on, but if you, if yeah. after taking and, and so let's see. So can we try this? Mm. I guess. I, I maybe I don't even have to take. What if I just go a five? Once again, I really don't see. I mean, now it's just equal pawns. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this yeah, seems yeah, yeah. seems okay. like a dead draw. Okay. And so, oh, is there any other uh, uh, trick so here? There's, there's, and if you play, and you can't play bishop takes b6 there because you've got knight takes where? b4 check at the very beginning after uh, b6. So uh, you can't so play b6 bishop takes b6. Position on the board. Three minutes. There's still three moves to go until the time control. Okay. But they do uh, have 30 seconds as well. Yeah, so. that's true. Johnny Machine is saying, check out Baburin's game. Actually, that's the game okay. that Alex, oh, yeah, Alex I was, and I, was, I were I was, just I was, looking I was at that. When sitting you beside ended. Alex uh, there, uh, watching it. And at around when the rook ending first appeared, uh, Killian offered Alex a draw. Mm -hmm. Alex thought for a bit and said, no, thank you. And Alex has been burning the time, but he, he sacked a pawn really nicely. And, and he's like, it, I think Killian has to be very, very careful not to lose. Well, when we looked at it uh, with Alex before you, literally the second before you joined me, this is the position we were looking at and we were wondering. Oh. Uh, can Babu win, <laughs> oh, win here? So Killian has just played a4. Obviously, White yeah, cannot yeah, take yeah, because yeah, of the yeah, stalemate. Yeah, yeah. So White played king f3, king right. b1. So it went like this queen b4, king a2, queen c4, queen b2. And now we get to this ending where White, uh, queen ending where White has the extra pawn. Oh. My, my gut feeling would be that this should be a draw. I think it might be. Or maybe with the king. I know. I, I from what I know, um, to like black is going to try and, and keep checking white's king. Of yeah, course. Yeah, and the white king is going to try and one somewhere in front of the pawn and shield the checks with yeah. the queen. Yeah, and I I know from from like uh, a thing I read, heard I don't know years ago was that the the best place for the black king is. Uh, Probably on h2 or g1. Mm -hmm. On the other side. On the other board. side. But you, what you do want to do is you want to stay as far away mm -hmm. as possible from um, to avoid uh, cross and checks. Counts, yeah. mm -hmm. the, where, where you block a check with a check. Mm -hmm. And I, I suspect that. Gourmet that fan club in the chat is also saying it feels like the White King is too exposed to the checks. And I actually, after. On second thoughts, I would also yeah. go with a white win here. But they've already made the time control, so I am yeah, going to yeah, go yeah, back yeah. to the two Stevens. So after b6, uh, white took on c6. 
and black took on c5 <coughs> and this is now the position on the board so we've just I think, I think I think I think he I think Stephen will uh, oh, which Stephen I think Stephen Brady will take the pawn on c5 be precisely and because, because if, if B5, you b5 a5 a5 and there is nothing at all yeah I don't think yeah okay so we think he's going to take but even here I mean I'll probably just go a5 anyway okay I don't want you playing a5 and then of course then king can't come in why does king can't come in I mean it can can it I know it can't even get to c6 I mean I don't really don't see oh. well you can play no okay what white will do is he will try to somehow push this pawn here but as soon as but that even happens, then we'll you, you go on the long diagonal don't and you? then maybe and, you and give the up the over. pawn to yeah Okay, so what I'm saying is, I guess, and this is on the board, by the way, so this is the okay, position on the board right. now. I suspect he would play a5 if you don't really want one white playing a5. No, he can't, can't play, play a5. Five. I mean, you, you, yeah, I mean, I have... Gormelli fan club is saying, why did he uh, trade the other bishop? Was it forced? I think it was after b6, it was pretty forced because... Yeah, you're losing the, the pawn. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. 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 I think, I think so, Stephen shouldn't have played c4. c4. c4 was a mistake, yeah. definitely. Maybe he just missed this whole b6. Ah, maybe, maybe the thing to move here you should play is a5. Would a5 be a better idea? I think for, there's for, a lot... For white. I mean, white is not in a rush anyway. No, like, no. black has no threat. Like, I guess you can even maybe bring the king up. There's a lot of things I think White could do. Yeah, here. King B King actually King B three looks looks King a, B3, a very a very yeah. decent move. Yeah. But C four the problem is yeah B six. You you're dropping. Probably just yeah. more or less forces yeah. a draw because yeah. okay you've dropped a pawn but well this did definitely not happen. So I think we're having uh, some trouble with the live board. Black did definitely not play Bishop B six. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll no. check it. Uh, I'll go I mean, on a break yeah, after yeah, Jonathan yeah, yeah. showed us his game, right. and I'll check in. Yeah, but I, I'm fairly certain this game will end in a yeah, draw. Yeah. Are there any other? Um... Yeah. So let's go to the Kanye Morala uh, okay. siblings. So uh, Tarun had this very interesting game against Sam. They've just made time oh. control. I'll go back to here. This is where we left it off. Uh, and Alex, uh, Alex Lopez said uh -huh. if he had his, uh, he he felt it, the game was going to end in a draw, because uh, Sam seemed like he was doing fine. He was an exchange up right. for just a pawn, but then he dropped another pawn, and then suddenly it's uh -huh. two pawns for the exchange. But now Black has gained one pawn back, and White <laughs> also. So once again, um, two pawns for okay. the exchange. But a three is gonna drop. Yeah, just no. So yeah, this is a yeah. position on the board. No, I think I think Sam will he will play this out until the very end, and he uh, from day one. I think he'll win. I think it will be. It will take a while though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I um, mean, not just it will take a while, but I don't know if it's. Which pieces do you do? You try to swap the knights, or do you try yeah, to, to keep the knight on? Do, do, will Sam keep the like? I, I presume, yeah. After whatever White plays now, I guess White will try and get rid of his H pawn if he can. Maybe a move like because okay, of course I want to swap as okay. many pawns as possible, yeah, and especially yeah. this pawn might be a weakness in the long run. I don't know if there's something wrong with H four immediately. And then maybe even put my bishop here. <laughs> Try to. Okay. And maybe, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Okay, but I suspect but black play, would you take. take. Yeah, you take. You take and there. Then they you take there, and the after knight. h five, you, I say you play g five. You don't want to swap off things, mm -hmm. but but is the problem is okay. You have to make sure that this h pawn is not gonna become a nuisance. Nuisance. Okay. But I guess it's fine. Yeah, there, and then how you're not. The knight has to go back. Okay, but am I already threatening to annoy you a little bit? I don't know. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, it's not not okay, that easy, okay. I would say. But of course, this line we're looking at is not forced. Yeah, Ninety three yeah, is on yeah. the board. They've just made the time control, so I think Tower will take his time here. Right. So um, let's move Trish? on to his sister. Um, two pawns down. Mm, I think David's going to convert yeah. that. Opposite colored bishops, oh, okay. but there's still yeah, rooks on the board. Yeah. 
very likely black will win this one. Yeah. And finally, before we get back to Al Baburin, we looked at already. We think he's going to convert. Oh, okay, so he's uh, so he's slow. Okay, so the, uh, slow. Killian started checking, and he's hoping that he can yeah. continue. And finally, last game. So Connor Murphy beat yeah. you on board six. Yeah. We already saw all these results. So quick look at Con Daly uh, against David Murray, um, which looks good for Dave Pono. Uh, oh, uh, but the king, the king, yeah. <laughs> Um, that's awful. No, yeah, no, no that's, that's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, oh no. No, I don't like that. Okay, there's a all. few threats there. Knight d7, knight h7. In fact, I suspect uh, that this was a time scramble here. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's just. Okay, well, I'll have to. Yeah, but but how, actually, what does what does black play now? Because you can't. You, if if yeah, it's a very good question. If knight d seven knight d seven is a threat, so you have to find so oh, oh you can't play bishop e six, you can't play bishop c six. You can play king move. You can't move your king because so you have to so move you ha your rook. and you can't move okay, your rook anywhere. You so knight e five, yeah, knight e five is forced then. And okay. okay, I'll take this pawn for starters, okay. I guess. And you walk away, I guess. I mean, yeah. Okay. Come back. Yeah. And you have to come here because after King D8, I think I have Rook here. Oh, no, no, I know that square is covered. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe I do go to D8. Um. But if you go to D8, how? Okay. Oh, yeah. Can can actually it doesn't matter. Does it, at this stage, wherever the king goes. Black, oh, sorry, white just plays king g3, king f4. And 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 if the knight has to move, if I you're go killed. G5, this will drop. Yeah, it looks yeah. horrible. Yeah, yeah. No, so really, David's, really David's gone. David's gone. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think we've looked at okay. everything. Ah, and the board two ended in a draw. Ah, uh, okay. White right. didn't even. They okay, did, yeah, we don't know yeah, what happened. Yeah. This didn't right. happen. No. Maybe White just offered a draw after taking probably, on c5. Probably. We'll have a quick look at my... At, uh, at, we'll go back know, to round two. Or, my, or, oh. my, or this game, the game I played today, no, because it was, it, was, it, was, it was really... It got really... It, well, I got at a least terrible we, opening. we can very quickly yeah, yeah. look at the one that we started. Okay, right, right. So we're okay. going back in time, round two. Jonathan, okay. Jonathan O'Connor here uh, against Henry Lee. So Henry anyway played a6, which is not, it's too slow, and you don't need to do it in the, these lines. And I said, okay, let's play aggressive. Um, and you play h4 to stop g5 ideas, and he, Henry plays queen c7, and I overprotect, like a good Nimzovician uh, student. And Henry decided here that he wasn't going to castle. He wasn't going to castle kingside at least, mm -hmm. and um, that meant I. Th I'm not sure. I would. I am. Um, it it led to a very tense game um, because I, my usual counterplay of just attacking the king on the kingside isn't going to. I'm, I don't have that target mm -hmm. anymore, mm -hmm. and so I've got to just do something else. And, and um, so anyway, I kept bringing my pieces around. Do you want to show us the game later? Uh, was I winning? Huh? Was I, was I losing? <laughs> I, I'm not using an engine. We're, we're, we don't use <laughs> engines. That, that's that's cheap for cheats. <laughs> for people out there, uh, Stephen Warren is in the room asking us if he was winning, but I'm not sure. I've decided to not use an engine. You were definitely um, lost after Bishop B6. <laughs> in, no, in no, the, he's joking. In the that's end, the last move that appears on the, on the, on the, the score. No, I was never winning. <laughs> Okay, so Stephen might come back to show us his game in a okay. second. For now, we'll continue with this okay, one. Yeah. Well, it, it, Henry plays standard queenside attack, and I played c3 because I thought I might want to play d4, and maybe that gave him a target. But um, so I kept on bringing my pieces around, and he played a. And you see, he has to play a5 now. And that that's a yeah, tempo yeah, that he yeah. could have played in one move. Yeah. And he would have done something else, so that would have yeah. been uh, an improvement, a help from 
So you bring your bishop here, and the bishop there, there may be tricks with, if then my knight can go to g4 and then to e3, I can take on d5 and then push e6, but it, it doesn't happen. Um, so he played bishop a6, and I I really wanted to play make c4 work, and I was I got worried here that that um, that the where's my mouse uh, there ah sorry and <laughs> um, I got worried that he could play this and this and then knight here, mm -hmm. and I thought we go we get this kind of position, mm -hmm. and then I thought I thought knight c5 here was was fine for him. The machine says I'm slightly better, mm -hmm. but I think it's 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 like, but I actually thought I was worse here, mm -hmm. because I thought the d-pawn was going to yeah. run and, and it was going to be awkward, uh, but maybe that's, he's still not bringing out his king rook, mm -hmm. and to do that I guess he has to castle, and if he castles then I might have an attack. So I suppose it's, mm -hmm. it's and, and the d-pawn may become weak mm -hmm. rather than strong. Yeah. So it's 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 so it, it, it was difficult to to, yeah. to, 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 to figure that one out, um, uh, but Henry didn't play that. He just brought his knight there. So I said, fine, I play. Uh, I'll defend my c4 pawn. Uh, exactly, uh, easy chess. Uh, and he played. And again, I was I was always thinking that he was he's going to swap on mm -hmm. c4, and he didn't. Um, and I think actually that was a good idea mm -hmm. from him. Um, so I uh, defend. I played here, uh, ready to come over. And now he played a four, again, carrying on. I'm thinking, okay, what am I doing? And I I went knight g four here, and he still doesn't take. He just went goes back here, um, to do stuff on the long diagonal mm -hmm. when it does open up, uh, if it opens up. And I'm here. I'm re I, I felt I was stuck for a move. If I play h5, yeah, the position looks nice it, visually. Yeah, but uh, and again, we need a plan. We need a plan, and and um, in a way, it's it's we're both jockeying for mm -hmm. position. We're both hoping that somebody's going to to blink first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so far, uh, neither of us has blinked. Have blinked. So I I went here with my queen, and. I don't. I wasn't really happy with that move, but I I couldn't see anything better. Um, and here he should play h6. Mm -hmm. If he plays h6, I think he's slightly better. Mm -hmm. um, and instead he played knight d4, and this and you punished him. And this is just he just gets killed now. Um, <laughs> uh, unfor unfortunately for Henry, but very fortunately for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took and. Uh, then key move is bishop g5. And mm -hmm. this is the thing that if he played h6, he would stop this. Mm -hmm. But if I swap off those black square bishops, it's just horrible for him. Mm -hmm. And and um, all his 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 black his pawns on d4 and b4 will be weak. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to open up yet. Um, and if he if he doesn't take on g5. It's it's going to be very difficult for him to like he can't move the bishop out of the way. So basically, is the position already very close to being lost here? I think it is. I think mm -hmm. it is. Um, although I, I think I looked at them. This machine said it was maybe not quite as bad, but there were no, a series of moves that happened that made his position worse um, over the next the next while. So he took. And of course, now the thing is, I, it took me a while to realize that the, the, the my pawn on, on uh, g5 there, if he ever castles, I, I can play things, I can consider knight f6. Mm -hmm. And it's just, he's got no space around his king, and I have a, an open h file, and yeah. uh, you know, I could even play it slow, and it'd be, it'd be great. So he's, he's, that's, that's going, uh, making things bad. Now he made, he made, um, he tried kicking me away, and he, Played this this queen here, uh, his butt pawn onto a three, and he shouldn't have done that. He should he should have taken on b three and then tried. I'm sorry, by the way, yeah. I've lost the chat on the other laptop, so I'm gonna pull up the chat um, okay. on my phone for now. And after this game, we'll take a quick break, and I'll sure. get the chat. Fixed. Okay, well, so he put he, he should have taken on eight on b three, and at least then maybe my b three 
pawn can act as, mm -hmm. a, as a, a target later mm -hmm. on. He might have some counterplay. Yeah, it seems a bit crazy to close the position when yeah. you're already yeah. being. And I, I don't want to take on d4 here because if I take if I take on d4 immediately, uh, nasty things might happen here with my, my with the, his rook mm -hmm. against my queen. So yeah. I didn't want to do do, yeah. do anything like that. And uh, so instead, I played queen d2, and I want to come over to f4 mm -hmm. and do nasty things on his uh, king if he castles. Mm -hmm. um, I know, oh no, I don't know. Yeah, we're no. almost. Anyways, he played queen e7, mm -hmm. and I went up to queen f4. Like, he's, he's got horrible. Now, now, he's, now I'm threatening to take on, on d4, and then mm -hmm. his, his knights attacked. And he doesn't have time to take my pawn here. And, and there's no defending the d4 pawn after queen c5. If he take if he if he takes on c4, I'm going to I take uh, d Wait takes c4, c4 and my rook is yeah. coming in and, and he's still not castled. Yeah. And that's his, he's playing a rook down. Mm, um, it's terrible. Uh, so he he went back, and I, he's also burning huge amounts of time trying to figure out. And now this is the. This is this is where I was really pleased with, mm -hmm. with my father, my next move. It's a very nice move. It is. I I really enjoy that, and yeah. and, uh, and it's it's quite a, a simple move because mm -hmm. you're saying I don't want to open the, the the diagonal for his bishop. I don't want to open the the file for his rook. Mm -hmm. But I'll give the pawn up mm -hmm. because I'm going to get back. Uh, the, the d pawn, mm -hmm. uh, d four pawn at least, and probably the b four pawn and the a three pawn. And you'll get the c file. And I'll get the c massive. file. And if he doesn't, if he moves away, I'll just put a rook on c one. Mm -hmm. I'll take his pawns and I'll push my c pawn mm -hmm. further. And um, nice. and it, it just, it's just yeah. And he went. That was a surprise. I thought he was going to back to to e seven, mm -hmm. but um, now the rook comes in. And I, I thought. I'm not simply winning, and of course he has rook d7, yeah. but it doesn't matter because um, I bring my other rook, rook over. And h8 is doing nothing. He's coming to f8, yeah. but yeah, he, not he, he, he he he's so worried. He has to play. He played rook f8 instead of castling because mm -hmm. he's so worried of knight f6 check, mm -hmm. which would have been a killer, a killer yeah. move for him. Yeah. So um, uh, so he played rook f8, and I zipped back mm -hmm. to attack the queen. Um, he goes back, and now I start collecting. gobbling, collecting pawns. And uh, here he play, he made a I blunder, that, yeah. and then it's merciless. It's just mate a, and mate to follow two moves. Yeah, it's so, a very nice game. So, yeah, thank you, Fiona. Yeah. So that yeah. was a uh, brilliant start. Okay, you've suffered two losses now, but they were against very strong players. It's not, yeah, Tomorrow yeah, you'll yeah. be back. I hope so. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> hope so too. Um, it's been a pleasure having okay. you, Jonathan. I think we're going to take a, yeah. a brief break sure. now because uh, we've made the first time control. I'll get my chat back set up. And then um, before we do that, let's just see if there's been any more results. Oh. So, round five. Yeah. No, so boards three, four, five are all still playing, board eight. Yeah. So there's still, oh, and everything else has finished. So we're just okay. going to take a very brief break and uh, we'll be back with the action of the last four remaining games. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Best of luck for Thank tomorrow. And uh, I'll be back in just about five minutes or so, so don't go anywhere.
some people oh okay <laughs> we're unmuted and we're back and i'm delighted to be joined by henry lee aka the yellow dragoon fellow streamer we have streamed together in the past if you're lucky you might have heard henry play the violin on my streams before or unlucky or unlucky good point yeah uh, bc 0123 says, hey Henry, heart emoji. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Gormelli Fan Club says, hi Henry, how are you? Good. Good. <laughs> it's been a tough start to the tournament for you. Yeah, um, no, I played some pretty strong opponents. Yeah, um, you did. And we were actually, well, for those of uh, you who were with us here, which I believe you were, um, Jonathan O'Connor was just with me <laughs> before you and he showed his win over you in round two. Uh, then he also lost to Stephen Moran, who's having a fantastic yeah, tournament. Yeah. He outprepared me. Played and very well. two comeback wins now. You're on a roll. Mm, yeah. Need to rack up a few more, but Indeed. it's going to happen. Also, the Fuchs here, who you might know from Twitch, ah, yeah, says, yeah, Hiya, yeah. Henry. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Fuxia, for me as well. Uh, you told me, I haven't seen it, you told me you've played a crazy game today, so I'm going to pass the mouse over to you. And Fuxia is saying, today's game was great, congrats. Well, like, objectively, I'm not sure how great it was, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Well, we might not see now how great it was objectively, because we're not using engines here. So I'll let you show us the game. And then, as you can see, there's only four games remaining in the whole tournament today. Uh, three of which are on the top five boards. So after you showed us your game, I'll ask you to stick around and have a quick oh. look at those games with me before we wrap up for okay. the game. Okay. So, um, wait, so am I just showing the game? You're here? showing the game. You're and and they, they, can, they can see the stuff, yeah? They see everything. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I was, I was playing uh, Sean. He's um, quite well prepared. Played a Karo Khan. I played him last year, actually, oh, the weekender. You? I think he's gained quite a bit of rating since I played him. And even then, I really struggled. Um, very tough player. He seemed quite tricky as well. Yeah, and he's a tricky player for sure. Um, so Bishop F5, this is kind of the main the main line. Uh, Bishop D3 takes, takes. Um, E6, Bishop G5. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. So I was there at the start of the round and I saw you guys were sort of joking and oh, talking, okay. talking yeah, yeah, during yeah. the game. Okay. So what yeah. happened there? Um, it, was, it was funny because um, basically I'll show you now. So Queen B6, Knight this is the main line. Um, C5, uh, Queen B2. Uh, I mean, this this is one of those positions where it's loads of theory. Um, From a distance, I wondered if you had blundered or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, no, the, the, like there's loads of theory to this position, basically. And okay, black goes knight c6, which is just the, kind of the only move. Um, and here there are three moves for white: knight f3, uh, knight e2, or c takes d5. So basically. I don't know that much theory from here. Maybe you can just put them on the board because yeah. all goes quite quickly. Let's just put them there so they will be in writing. So yeah, so um, knight f3 is kind of the main move. Um, it's arguably also the best move. Um, knight e2 is not as common, but it, it's also a move. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, like in all, all of these positions, it's really crazy because black is kind of taking pawns and um, I'm trying to get compensation for that. Um, I believe like... Knight f3, and like, I, I really don't remember, but it's something maybe like knight b4, queen e2, and okay, some crazy variations. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, both sides kind of need to know, um, uh, need to know their theory to kind of not lose. Mm -hmm. um, hello, by the way, to everyone who's just joining us now. Uh, I didn't say hello earlier to Mr. Dolce Chess, X Blitz Blitzking12. Mm -hmm. Welcome to all of you. Maybe people are just coming home after work. Ah, that's, that's good. It's lovely that's good. to see you on. Um, so, yeah, so I played a move that I believe it's it's only been played once or twice before. Um, I, for, I forgot who played it, but some strong player um, played C takes D5. So the funny thing is, going into the game, I knew objectively that this is kind of... Do you of... want to know? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, yeah. We can check the database. No games found for this position. I don't think that's kind of accurate. Maybe, could there be a move? No, I don't think so. Thing? I'm so hunter. this position has been played before, even by Connor with the black pieces. Yeah, so that, that's the exact game. That, oh, well, actually, that's not the exact game. In that, in that, um, in that game, white played knight e2. Let's sort by rating. Okay, so this position has been played by quite a few strong players. Yeah. But now, so if we do it as an opening tree, 
So apparently the two only moves. Mm. If we can trust this database, which in my experience... Okay, Gromani fan club says Morozovic played it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, I... Uh, Okay. C takes D5 has been played before. Okay. Um, now, the funny thing is, as I said, I didn't do that much preparation going into this game, but I did have a look at this line, um, and I knew objectively this is kind of bad for white. I believe it's like minus one, so black is better after CD, but um, it's a really, really sort of complex position. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, maybe, maybe you know, run out of theory quicker this way and we can get a normal game. Mm -hmm. Um, so I take is here. that what you were saying to him during the game? No, no, in the, in, in the, in the game. We weren't really saying that much. You, like, well, I saw you both sort of giggling away. and like, oh, There was definitely okay. some words oh, exchanged. I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you. So okay. he, he played queen takes d4. Um, well, no, well, uh, so basically what happened was when he went for this kind of crazy line, I was kind of laughing to myself. It's like, um, of course, you go for this kind of theory-heavy <laughs> line now. He was like, yeah. Anthony is such a serious tournament, and you tell yeah. your opponent, can't believe you'd go for this. No, I didn't say that. But I, I was kind of like, thinking I, was, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I was like, of course, this this stupid line that I didn't prepare. Um, so I played Queen B1. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so I, was, I was debating between not F3, not E2, or CD5, and I was like, okay, you know, maybe um, maybe he won't know the correct mm -hmm. move here. Because in this position, there's only one move that. Um, kind of and worked. you you were familiar with this position? Not really. I kind of looked at this uh, on the engine. But about I mean, you knew that there was only one move. Oh yeah, yeah. So I know, I know, so um, I believe in the uh, the other game that White played this black kind of played queen e five check. Mm -hmm. I believe this loses um, because of knight e four actually. Okay. And it's it's kind of crazy. I believe it's something like if if you take on d five, maybe I can go queen d seven. Okay, let's. Um, you can show that. I'm not sure, but but I, I believe this is really strong for White. Um, I suspect it's like queen b7, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe if you, maybe if you take care of queen f1, I'm not sure. Um, queen c4, queen c4, knight two, and maybe I'm winning here. In fact, yeah, Crazy. I'm probably winning here. Very nice. Um, but of course he knew that. Yeah. I'm a dedicated power player, <laughs> um, and he played queen takes d5, and mm -hmm. he was was like, oh no, he knows this line. Now he's minus one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we got a. So I played knight f3, and. I believe the best move here is knight b4. So this is kind of the extent of my preparation. I literally tossed this onto the Lee Chess engine. Or Mali Fan Club says Henry seems very well versed in these lines. No, 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 no. Not not versed at all. Um, so knight b4, I believe, is the best move. So if I castle, it goes queen a2, and then, okay, black mm -hmm. is much better. So I have to go a3 here. Um, knight d3 checking f1, I think, something like this. Mm -hmm. And um, So basically, black is better here. But it's also a ridiculous position because mm -hmm. like, what is going on? Um, and like, it's it's in these kind of positions that you kind of have to not trust your computer's evaluation sometimes, at least practically, mm -hmm. um, because I mean, pra I think practically it's easier for white to play than for black. But really, like black is definitely better, objectively, hundred um, percent. Now in the game, but it's a very double edge, like oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, one you take one wrong well step. Yeah, basically on either side. You see, because what happens is instead of it's like a wrong step, not really. So the thing is, if he plays knight before, he's better. Mm -hmm. In the game, he took on e five, and I believe this is like equal or something. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look, if you really look at the position, like, and it's, if it's equality and black is three pawns up, then you can't trust this yeah. because, I mean, like, you kind of have to play chess, and mm -hmm. it's kind of a very dodgy position for both sides. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here I castle king side, which I think is probably logical. Um, so I'm threatening knight e5, queen e5, queen b5 mate. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a cheeky threat. But, um, yeah, so if he takes on f3, it's horrible because our capture Let's just show that. Let's just make a pass move. Okay, like rook, so rook h7. Yes. What Henry is saying, his cheeky threat. It's to checkmate. Indeed. Like king like that. Very nice. Yep. Okay, so... So I didn't play rook h7? No, then. unfortunately not, you know. <laughs> opponent was... Actually, the rook would even be hanging on h7. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well play rook h6 after the exchange instead. But okay, uh, my opponent played... Uh, what did my opponent Bishop e7. Yes, bishop e7. Um, and here I started to, like, worry. Because I was like, oh, no, I don't see a win. But I'm three pawns down. Mm -hmm. Um... But I think I found a nice resource to at least make the game more interesting. Because, okay, originally I was planning rookie one. Um, 
Hitting knight. And also, by the way, if I go knight e5, queen e5, queen b5 check, uh, he is king f8. Mm -hmm. and, and the king I, is I, Yeah, safe. and I couldn't find anyway. And if I go knight e5, queen e5, queen b7, he has got queen d5. Mm -hmm. um, attacking my queen with tempo, so that's kind of terrible. Um, now, what else? Yeah, so I was planning rookie one, but I was worried about um, knight c6 in this position. And literally, he goes knight d4 next move. No matter what I play. Even so. if you play, take on b7. If I take on b7, that's probably great for black. Because mm. you're still going knight d4, and you're, you're, you're still two pawns <laughs> up. So. And like, something like this was what I was worried about. Mm -hmm. Where black is kind of holding. Mm -hmm. um, did not want that to happen. Mm. So I, I thought for a long time here, I believe. 55 minutes. Did I? Yeah. No, no way I spent that long. No way. The clock doesn't lie, Henry. No, 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 no. I did not spend that long. Chess 24 does not lie. Mm, no, 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 no. Hips uh, don't lie. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't spend 55 minutes. Maybe. Minute. Maybe like 40 minutes. You the toilet for the first 15 minutes. Or getting a coffee. I don't drink coffees. But getting a Sprite. Mm, I don't like Sprite. Playing the violin. Mm, not, 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 not sure. <laughs> In fact, actually, I, I, I ordered an electric piano that's due to arrive tomorrow, so that's good. Um, so anyway, Henry uh, anyway. 55 minutes. Apparently, which I do not believe. Allegedly. Do, do not believe, but okay. But I like this move knight c4. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks crazy at first, but... Um, it actually might be quite dangerous if black is careless. Okay, so first of all, you have to take this knight on f3. Check. G takes f3, so... Uh, still three pawns down here, um, with doubled pawns. Yeah, with king, it's kind of, king a bit. Uh, yeah, it's a ridiculous position. And so here what black should do... Should have went queen c6. Okay, can I ask... Uh, 95. If I took on f3, you're gonna checkmate me somehow, yeah? If you take on f3, I go 95, and you're... Can queen. you show me? Yeah, of course. So, 95, and... You're and kinda, queen you're, you're, b5. Queen b5, 97, smothered mate, all this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. All this nasty stuff. Um, so yeah, so the idea with queen c6 is you can kinda go back to c7. Um, but, okay, here you have to go queen b6. And this is kinda what I calculated. And originally, this is why I spent so long on that move, is because originally, um, yeah, I wanted to go queen e4, and I thought from afar this is good because I'm threatening this queen a4 check, but then I saw queen b4, um, this is when I played knight c4, um, and I didn't like this, and then I wanted to go queen d3 here, the idea is the queen is not on b6, so if you go rook d8, I go, you know, queen d8 and mate you. Mm -hmm. um, Let's just show it. Okay. For the viewers. And checkmate, very so, nice. But the problem is, um, I couldn't find anything for me after black was not f6. Mm -hmm. And okay. Uh, I think black is mm -hmm. be black is better slash winning, three pawns hope. Um, but okay. Um, uh, black doesn't, okay. I don't have to go queen e4. I thought now queen c2 maybe. Mm -hmm. Quiet move. Going queen a4 still. Yeah, it still looks tricky for black. I it's mean, complex. Like black goes like queen eight six or something. Okay, this is really unclear. I mean, like, you know, I can go um, rook d seven here, and this is kind of just a crazy position. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. No clue what's going on there. Only the machine can tell me. Um, definitely make fun of me you after as well. You uh, haven't checked it with an engine yet. Like, we've looked at it in the lobby with the Chess 24 engine briefly, but that's not accurate. Mm -hmm. have to get Mr. Stockfish or something. Mm -hmm. uh, or download Stockfish first. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so my opponent... Okay, took on F3 again, which is correct. And, um, okay, then took on C4. So, from far away, I thought this was um, kind of unpleasant for me, sacking the exchange. Um, so I took on B7, of course, and... Now that you're, Second. Because I'm taking this rook on a8, okay, so yeah. you have to let that go. But yeah. um, there's a, there's a, there's this kind of nice variation that if you kind of go rook d8, getting mated here, queen c6, um, king f8, nice little mate here, rook d8, bishop d8, queen check here, bishop d7, knight e7, queen d8, mate, which is kind, nice. kind of nice. Yeah. Of course, there's no way he's falling for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, instead of that. Black has to go f6, the only move. Uh, now we get to this kind of ridiculous position. Mm -hmm. where um, So now the material count... He's a pawn up. So he has no, 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 it's equal material. Equal. This, this, is, this is equal material. This is, um, but I actually think I'm... I think 
this is winning huh. already because the problem is there's this kind of pressure on the back rank, rank. Mm -hmm. so you can't move your you can't move your knight because your rook's hanging. Um, so I play bishop e3. He took on h4. Uh, now, now the problem is that I've got rook d7. Mm -hmm. And um, now look, if you, if you move your knight, your rook is hanging. Yeah. If you move your rook, um, bad things happen. I don't know, bad things happen. Yeah, so from C4. But the problem is, where do you move your rook? You only have h7, but then you kind of. I know you can take on c5 because. You oh, queen g5 checked. Yeah. yeah, and you can, um, you need to keep that. But the problem is, find a move here for black. Yeah. Right? So tied down. And it's funny, these double pawns do a good job of mm -hmm. stopping all the, the checks. checks. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the game, Black played F5. a very funny position. F5 was played in the game. Yeah, um, yeah now this is funny because Black wants to go F4 and get counterplay. Mm -hmm. So I played Rook C1. Um, now, funnily enough, I'm not threatening to take on C5 because Queen G5 now picks up the Rook. But you're threatening to take on C5. With the rook, I guess. Maybe, yeah, 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 I am. Like, I mean, if I if I play f four, then uh, then I take on c five. That's the idea. Then, uh, of it's, course, it's, of it stops. Um, it stops f four. Just kind of the main idea. Yeah. And if you don't have f four, then find a move. Yeah. Um, hmm. So I think this is lost. Uh, black white king f six. Um, I played queen e eight. So now I'm threatening rook e seven. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much you can do here. King e five. Oh yeah, I played king e five here. Um, mm -hmm. King March. Interesting. Yep. Well, I mean, there's not much Black would do, but F4 check. If it was King of the Hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't consider that. Got to look at it from many different pers perspectives, you know. So I was, yeah. I was kind of hoping, you know. Gormelli fan club saying Black is only attacking with one piece, so there's no real danger to the yeah, White King. That's true. But in positions, I have to be careful about Rook lifts. It's, yeah, it's just really first, complex. Yeah. But I was, I was kind of hoping for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. But, but my opponent um, didn't allow. Didn't allow it. My opponent played king f six. Mm -hmm. Now I took with the rook. Um, so if you take queen f seven, it's mate or rook f seven. So queen g four check, king f one. And uh, now my opponent was very nice, played queen g five. Mm -hmm. um, That's a lovely touch. Yes, yes. Allowed me to uh, the that. It's a very nice checkmate on the board with the pawn. Yes, yes. And uh, let me just ask you, so after queen h3, you just won out of checks, I guess. Yeah, because the rook is covering d1. Mm -hmm. And if you go queen h3, I go king e1 or king e2, doesn't and matter. And then no. I just run. Yeah. And the funny thing about these positions is that my king is actually quite safe on this side of the board. Just because I have three major pieces over here. Mm -hmm. So like even if you do check me a lot, I'm probably hiding yeah. um, on the queen side. We have no pawns, but three major pieces. Very nice. Crazy game indeed. It was a crazy game, yeah. See, I thought I was lost, and um, he thought you know, he was How lost. relieved are you tonight? Pretty relieved that I didn't lose. Mm. Yeah, I, was, I was very scared of losing that game, to be honest. It was okay. a very double-edged game. Um, but now you're back on uh, on track. Sharp stuff, says Gomeli Fun Club. And now you're going to help me figure out what's happening on the remaining few boards. So we'll start on board three, Tyrone oh, yeah, yeah. against Sam Collins. Uh, we left it off here. I No, where did we leave it? We didn't leave it off here. We left it off. Wow. Uh, where, one second. Oh yeah, here, after knight d3. This is where we left. Oh, interesting. And I'd actually suggested h4 here. I wanted to go h4, f5 and try to trade. trade. Yeah. yeah. So h4, King H6. Uh, King H6. Stopping H5. Yeah. And H5 anyway. G H. Oh, and then King H4, of course. G H was played and King H4. That's clever. Very, very nice play. Very interesting by, by Tyrone. Oh, Knight E1 is quite clever as well, actually. Huh? Knight E1. So the point is, if oh, I... Oh, it's a clever. So... It's very crazy. It's very crazy, that's for sure. Um, In the game... Um, so he did take. Take, yep. Yeah. And then Knight G2 is the point, I guess. So you can play remove I guess like this four because I just defend him. Yeah, yeah and also I covering g two. Maybe. Also covering g two, yeah. and this should be should be drop. Yeah, definitely a drop. Yeah, because once this drops, yeah, so then even maybe white is kind of trying to do something yeah. with those pawns. But so instead knight, knight g two, two king g three. That was the point. And that's the position on the board now. Ah, and then knight knight takes e three. Ah, with the point that knight e three rook a three. Now you're hitting two pieces. What did you say? Oh wait, no, this is just a draw. Wait. What happens if I take you? What did you say? The point is... No, sorry. Uh, you have to take your bishop here, because if you take the pawn, then take f7 as a theoretical draw. What are you saying? So, okay, wait. This is the position. So not e3 was played. Yeah. Okay, so white has... Okay, so if white takes on e3, mm -hmm. I guess 
Um, so I'll ask the play king takes h5. Because if you take here, you uh, said then, that's a draw after white bishop takes, f7. Yeah. So we're saying this is a draw. That's definitely a draw. Rook against bishop is a draw. 100%. Even without yeah, the pawn, yeah, but yeah, here you still have yeah, the pawn. Yeah, 100%. So you're saying... You, so uh, you have to, so basically after knight e three you have to take it's white's move here so white takes knight uh, three yes sorry so you have so to take that's here. kind of the only chance to try and play for a win here um, but I believe this must be a draw rook against knight is also quite an bro it's it's easy quite an easy draw. draw yeah now the only thing is if that can make anything of that um the f seven pawn <laughs> uh, none of your business <laughs> I think he's asking yeah. Henry, I'll put you on the spot. What humorous thing, and none of your business guessed mm -hmm. it earlier, what humorous, say, can, what humorous thing can you say about the draw between Stephen Brady and Stephen Moran? Is this like a pun or something? Yeah, Alex came up with it last night. When I saw the pairing, I was like, oh, the two Stevens are playing. So, so it's more than just the two Stevens, yeah? yeah it's, a, it's a joke. Let's see if you get there first in the what? chat. So you asked me to come up with a pun for the... It's not a pun. They made a draw, so... It's... Can Ivan guess it? What humorous thing can you say about the draw on board two between Stephen Brady and Stephen Warren? It's... Uh, no, no comment. <laughs> Even Stephen. <laughs> oh. See, I haven't really heard of that much, so... It's very funny, no? I don't understand. What does that mean? Do you need the Do you need the laptop? Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, I'll just use my phone for the chat. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much. No problem. We'll now lose the chat, but we'll just bring it up on the phone, so that is fine. And we're still trying to figure out this ending. And Alex Baboon is in the room, which I guess means that he has won his game against Killian Delaney. Oof. Ooh. Yeah, oof. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Not nice, it's ridiculous. <laughs> What's the ending winning all along? No, no, no. It's a always draw. a draw. Always a draw. a draw. We didn't really look at it. We'll, we'll come back to it later. Wow. So that's the final position. The result is not on chess 24 yet, but I guess it will be input very shortly Ooh. because after queen b2, queen b3 is king playing. a4, yeah. uh, and it's just going to be a mate. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's. You know what we'll do? We'll look at this game in some more detail in a second. Let's go back for yes. now to, to the game we're looking at. Which Tarun, is Tarun, against yes. Sam. Where is that? Uh, board three. Board three. Yep. And let me bring up the chat. Oh, so, so let's see. In the game. Oh, this happened. Ooh. So 93 happened. And then white played Bishop F7. Again. Oh, this is just a draw. So this happened. Yeah, this, this is just a draw now. Yeah, because the last pawn has been taken, so... Um, um, can, is there anything Sam can try here? Well, you can try knight f5 check, yeah, king somewhere, knight d4. And okay, then... let's put the games on the board. Okay, we have... Yeah, well, apparently it was a very painful game for, for Killian. Fox is saying it will hurt for quite some time. So we look at that uh, after we're done looking at Tarun and Trisha. It looks like the only chance is um, knight f5, say king f4 and knight d4. And then I pick off this last pawn and try and win rook and knight versus knight and bishop, but really... There's no way I really can keep yeah, pawn. the pawn, but okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, but this will go on forever. They will play. Will they? Yeah. They... I'm sure rook and knight... Actually, I actually don't know anything about this ending. Rook and yeah. knight versus knight and bishop, I've never yeah, seen this before. Also never. Uh, but I assume it's an easy draw anyway. I don't know if it's... I assume it's a draw, but I don't know how easy it is. Yeah, I've never really looked at... I've never considered this. You know who I'm sure would be an expert on this? Keith Arkell? Oh, Keith, Keith knows all these he? sort of... Is he an endgame man? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> you don't know that. Everyone knows that. I know but Bourne is very good Keith at Keith is a, an expert. Oh, is so he? So look at my... Da, da, da. If anyone can check just with the table basis just to confirm it's a draw. I assume it is. Must be. Actually, one, okay, two, three, four, so five, six, seven pieces, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So if anyone has some time on their hands and can let us know, but we assume it's a draw. Probably. Yeah. And 
The only question is, what's Tyrone's uh, clock time? Oh, Tyrone's clock time. Um, 12 minutes. Uh, uh, both more, 12 more than minutes. enough time. Yeah. Should be enough. Okay, so moving on to board four. Trisha, Trisha against David, David. Simons. It looked very uh, difficult last time we saw it. It's two pawns. Opposite colored bishop. But oh, still, like, yeah. No, 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 no. This is not what you want. No. I I'm sure this is winning on for black. Yeah, I also, I mean, we assumed. Yeah. Like, you, you don't, you never trade off rook. See, the thing about these endgames, the rook and, um, you like, even if you're only like one pawn or no pawns up, uh, these endgames can be very tricky because, uh, like, the side who has an advantage just doesn't trade off rooks. Mm -hmm. And it's, the problem is you're basically pieced down in the, the other color. And you have to be careful about king safety in these endings. Um, yeah, I think this is probably just lost. And we're getting some info from Gormali Fanta. Uh, and he's saying uh, Nick Pert in his DVD, which uh, he made an endgame DVD oh. for Ginger GM, and he said that as long as the knight stays close to the king, I know, but is, is he talking about rooking knight? Okay, so tight knight is saying it's a table-based draw. Yeah, not, not really a surprise there. Yeah. Um. Okay, so it's a table-based draw now. Can Tyrone hold it? My guess would be yes, but yep. is, he will have to do some work still. And there's only one game remaining, uh, so let's go there. Oh, Colin eight. against David. Yeah, we fought, when I looked at this with Jonathan. Oh, interesting. Okay. Looks like a draw. We <laughs> at first glance. It's first very glass. interesting because we thought that Dave was dead. When did we look at it? White had just played knight f6 or something. Here we looked at it. Mm -hmm. And we thought. Ah, oh, yeah. It just looked. It does look kind of bad, doesn't it? But this move, we didn't. Really I guess you get counterplay. Yeah. Oh, you're sacking a pawn as well. Yeah. Oh, but rook c2, and you're getting counterplay on g2. No, but you're basically sacking. I consider this at all. Oh, wait, what? We thought you had to. Actually, we uh, thought we thought you, knight e5 was the only way of dealing with mm. knight e7, but apparently. Okay, b3. that's a resourceful move. That's very, very clever. Very resourceful. King e8, of course, takes. Oh, I take that one. So, what happens if you take the rook? Do I push on or do I not I push on? Push on. You can't oh, stop. Oh, you can't stop it. That's very so funny. Nice. Ah, that's, that's good. That's, that's a good try. Very, very nice. That's a good try. Okay, so um, Colin, Colin took the pawn. Bishop takes. Then he took here. Okay, so this is. And now. Obviously, if anyone's. Oh, well, you take you take H7. You take on H7. Okay, we still have a. Then they're playing. What would on. you. You would probably guess. Like, I'm guessing this is a draw. I mean, like, I don't see how either side makes progress yeah. here, to be honest. Like, if anyone's better, it's probably Knight and Bishop. Mm. But, like, you don't have that much to work with. Although, like, if you pick off the E3 pawn, maybe you have some chances. Mm. But. Mm. Let's see what happens. So, Knight E4, Rook A6, King E5. Rook A5, Bishop D5, King G1. Yeah. I'd say this is probably a draw. Because, like, why can even go G4 to trade off some more pawns? Mm -hmm. Okay, like, you're probably never winning that. Yeah. Um, although, like, if White messes this up and gives D3 pawn up, maybe, but, like, it should be a draw. And John McMorrow says, have you seen oh. the end of Malaf against Quinn? No, we didn't, actually. Oh, I, saw, I, I was, I was beside that board, actually. I didn't see it. It looked like a very crazy game. game. Let's just go back. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's, it's one of these head games. Wow. Okay, let's take it here from the time control, move 40. You take us through this. Yeah, so that, like, this is kind of ridiculous. Rook d8, rook c8. Okay, so black is up two pieces, but... Black, two, two pieces and two... Uh, sorry, two and pieces two. and a pawn. Yeah. But at the same time, what is promoting? Yeah. Um, but now now we have this hilarious it's position. Um, I believe, was it queen against two knights is a draw, I think. Um, I think I it might depend on the position. Weird, yeah, it's weird. Actually. Or maybe... Well, that, I think it's actually not a draw, but I'm not... Sure, but certainly, obviously, Black is the only one trying to win yeah. here. Um, but I'm surprised how quickly he did it. Maybe what blundered? Probably. Maybe five. But okay, I mean, come to oh think, and, uh, oh, not five, yeah. Come to think about it, I mean, it seems like at least my gut feeling tells me Black should be winning anyway. My gut feeling tells me that the problem is the three pawns are connected. Yeah, that's the big problem. Exactly. Uh, and like you, you have. Five pieces to shield your king from one yeah. piece. So, but still very nice. This is probably winning actually. You just take the yeah. You literally do this and kind of just roll with the pawns. Did, did White have any? Okay, could 
go somewhere. I suspect I it's lost anyway, right? Because yeah, you, you go, you literally go G five, G four, and then F five, and then yeah. you just kind of yeah. do that. Yeah. I suspect it's lost. <laughs> very nice. Uh, finish. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. So Mark Quinn, sort of back. Okay, still has same same kind of score as me. As we, we could play. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's true. Okay, so we've looked. So let's look at the the Babu Renan game, shall oh, we? Oh, okay, yeah. So oh yeah, yeah, that was a. Okay, so this uh, queen ending. Wow. We've sort of thought it would be win this, that this queen win, uh, ending is winning anyway because the king is too close. Very to, complex, anyway. Yeah, Jonathan O'Connor said that what he knew, he thought the king should be as far away as possible. Uh, but yeah, so let's not look at the queen ending because. Nah, queen ending. Yeah. Oh, too complicated. Too, too many complicated. checks. Too many checks. Uh, but let's look at the rook ending. So Alex Baburin was oh, in the room. Oh, interesting. So where did this rook ending? Oof. You said was it you who said that Killian offered a draw at the start of That's, the ending? Don't think that was me. Might have been something then else. Then it was Jonathan. Yeah. Who said? So apparently Killian uh, offered a draw. Maybe not here, but so somewhere at the start of the objectively it, it should be a draw. But I mean, like you're the ending expert. Expert, you take us. I'm not an ending expert. You take us Get to Oracle here or something, yeah. <laughs> as you said. You take us to where things went wrong for Killian. But yeah, losing this position is gonna, as Fuxia said, be painful. Yeah, oh, yeah, actually, this objectively should be a draw, but. Well, of, course, of course, uh, I mean, I'd be, I'm surprised that Killian would offer a draw because, okay, it should be a draw, but of course, Black is the one who has to fight for it with a damage pawn structure. Yeah, but Black is so active that it feels maybe, like... Yeah, maybe, Because activity is really everything in Rook yeah. and Pawn endings. People don't realize that sometimes. But, uh, yeah, like, sometimes when you have to sacrifice some pawns to get a protection, yeah. or, like, or to get, even get counterplay, it's actually yeah. worth it. Yeah. So maybe you don't have to take it, but... No, I'm mean, taking it should be fine. Yeah. So A5, looks it's okay. Okay. But now Black is already not as active anymore. Yeah, because so, what's threatening E4 like, here? It feels like somewhere things already went a little bit wrong. Well, let's, let's, let's see how White made the progress. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense, actually. Ah, that happened, okay. So we get like a forcing sort of uh -huh. and then sequence. We this. It was actually funny if you click a few moves. Um, when Alex was here with me earlier, we saw this position here <laughs> after... Queen here, here, here. After a four, we saw it. It's quite funny. Ah, <laughs> that's nice. Mm. That's clever. Very clever. So where was the mistake? Do you think in the rook ending? Where did things go wrong? That's kind of. Mm. That's really hard to say at a first glance. Yeah. Uh, ending. I mean, this shows you as well because we are not using an engine like just scrolling through the moves like we just did. It's very difficult to pinpoint, you know, like yeah, how it just I like a mistake. for sure. Let's see. Of course, Alex Baburin, Grandmas. It's always difficult as well playing these end games against players like Alexander Baburin, who's not very experienced for no reason. Very experienced in end games. Very experienced. Hmm. Mm. No clue, to be honest. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't tell you on a first glance. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite strange. But yeah, kudos to uh, Alex Baburin, who's now on three and a half out of five. So let's just see. So with those games um, still going, boards three and four. Um, let me see. So Alex uh, Lopez so lead on four and a half out of five. Mm. Mm. Good performance. Good performance, Good performance so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> uh, Stephen Moore and Connor O'Donnell on four out of five. Wow. And all of these players who are still playing, um, the two Kanye Morales siblings, Sam Collins and David Fitzsimons, all on three. So my guess is that uh, David Fitzsimons will probably join the group on four out of five. Yeah, I think likely, yeah. Ooh, people doing well here. And in that case, probably David. I know David is on the same color as Alex and Stephen Moran also. So I guess Alex will most likely have another pairings expert, but probably be playing David Fitzsimon. Yeah, I don't do this. I just or Stephen Moran. I, 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 <laughs> I, I just let people do the pairings. Yeah. I don't really, you know. Okay, so I think a last quick look at Sam's game because um, Trisha is going to go on for a while, but. 
Okay, and another yeah, this looks very bad. Very she bad. will three points down unless yeah. something dramatic happens, and I close the chat again. Hello. No, the chat is here. All is good. Uh, so yeah, so Trisha, unless something dramatic happens, we'll lose this game. Yeah, Rook G1 here, for example. Yeah. We're losing a third, a fourth pawn actually. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's that's probably too much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so last quick look at uh, her brother Tarun against Sam Collins, and then ah. we'll wrap up because See. both these games will. Okay. Uh, actually, this game will go on for a long time. So we so. got we got this ending. We're uh, yeah. Actually, there is not much to look at. I have a feeling Sam's gonna play this on. Yeah, of course. I mean, everyone will yeah, try. Yeah. But you'll never, you'll never get this like again. You know that, so yeah, you might yeah, as well yeah. give it a go. Because it's interesting. Someone in the chat, yes, for Lund is saying, "Who is that dude?" Who is that dude? Who are you? Uh, I'm just a random player here. <laughs> F M Henry Lee, aka the Yellow Dragoon. If someone could be nice enough to put the link to Yellow Dragoon and uh, his Twitch link in the chat. So you can all make sure to follow Henry, Henry and subscribe to his channel. Yeah. Um, Even though I stream very rarely, but yeah. yeah. Probably more often than me these days. Really? But we'll both get back to I it. I stream very rarely. Also, we had used still a, a joint stream, a, a special FM title celebration oh, stream. Oh, yeah. And I'm, which I'm, is I'm long over I'm getting my electric piano tomorrow, so you can hear okay. my terrible, terrible musicianship <laughs> stuff. Brilliant. So yeah, so I think that's going to conclude uh, this coverage of round five. There we go. Thank you very much, Fuxia. Make sure... Is he 2700? Oh, in on. the making. No. No. <laughs> so that concludes uh, the coverage for round five here at the Irish Championship. No good manager. I'm a secretary. Wait, am I the secretary here? I'm the secretary. Se I'm the secretary. <laughs> that's not... Oh, you're the secretary. I guess I'm so. the secretary. The right She's my secretary. I don't know. Uh, uh, wait, I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Right, right. That means that you're the secretary, apparently, because you you will be on the right here. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on that note, yep. yep. I'm, I'm gonna you. take over this Twitch channel. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> steal the computer and run off. <laughs> this concludes the commentary of round five. Uh, of the Irish Championship, uh, it's been a pleasure. There's been some very interesting games, um, a lot more action to come to look forward to. Uh, if you type the live command in the chat, you'll get a link to the games if you'd like to follow them until the end. We'll not stick around because Sam is going to try for as long as he can, probably another 50 moves. This will go probably on. Probably another 50 moves. Well, probably more because some capture will happen. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so uh, so thank you very, very much uh, for watching to all of you. Thank you, a special thank you uh, to the two very de generous donations. <laughs> Someone's trying to break into the room. It's a ghost. Uh, thank you very much for the two extremely generous donations um, from Mark Singer and from Blazer O. <laughs> Henry is, I think, getting picked up, but we're just wrapping up anyway. Uh, so thank you very much to all of you. I'll be back tomorrow, 5.30 p.m., British Summer Time. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, oh, Background Pond, for the bits. And uh, Johnny Machine, I hope you're around. It would be good to see you, John McMorrow. Mm. So yeah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.